From our family to yours, we promise the best quality in our Scott Farm sweet potato products. Whether served as healthy wedges or crunchy chips, we take pride in serving our community and our country. Locally grown and hand-picked, our chips provide the perfect choice for your game day snacks. Whether hitting a home run or cheering on the sidelines, our products ensure a healthy snack nearly everyone will enjoy. You're, You're always safe, safe at home, home with Scott, Scott Farm. Farm. Hey, Tops fans, Doug Payne here along with you as we get set for some Tops baseball this evening, coming to you live from the North Carolina Baseball Museum, Thursday, June 14th, and it's another Throwback Thirsty Thursday here at the ballpark. It's also City of Wilson Little League night and another Farm to Field Farmer's Market here at Historic Fleming Stadium. Gates open at 6 p.m. first pitch at 7 as we take on the Edenton Steamers for the fourth time this season here in 2018. Now time for our Merge Ortho pregame injury report, just one to speak of as Rigsby Mosley takes off of the DL. He is active here for the game tonight, and that's who we're joined by as Rigsby Mosley from Troy. And Rigsby, first welcome here to the Tops. Thank you for having me. And uh, just talk a little bit about, you know, playing at Troy and the experience that you have there, but, you know, coming here to Wilson for the summer. Uh, playing at Troy is a lot of fun. They have a really good uh, basis of fans there every game, and all the fans are really loyal, and that's what I hear about Wilson, so I'm pretty excited about it. And the Tops tonight, obviously, taking on Edenton again right now. They have the 2-1 record against them. For Edenton, they're trying to tie it up. And, you know, coming into an outfield, that's your game where you played it at Troy. So just talk about, you know, obviously with the BP, take some infield outfield today. So just kind of talk about getting used to Fleming Stadium and what you think so far. Um, it's a little different because Troy, it's all turf. So that could get, be yeah, that could be a difference. Kind of get used to the real field, mm -hmm. but it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. And obviously, haven't had a lot, a lot of time to kind of talk with the guys in the locker room. But um, you know, early on, still kind of nine, ten, ten games into the season, just talked about getting adjusted with the guys and getting into them and comfortable with playing with them. Uh, once we get comfortable with each other, I think we're gonna do really well. Again, Rick Mosley mostly joining us here on the Team Update video, courtesy of Merge Ortho, Thomas Law, and Green Lake. We want to thank you for joining us tonight as the Tops get set to take on Edenton at 7 p.m. Tops roll. And welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, the page along with here as we get set to bring you live play-by-play -play coverage of Wilson Tops baseball as we come to you live from Wilson, North Carolina, here on a beautiful Thursday evening as it is throwback Thirsty Thursday along the city of Wilson Little Ignite here at Historic Fleming Stadium. Also welcoming our friends for the Farm to Field Farmers Market, courtesy of Dean's Farm Market. Again, I'd like to send a thank you to our game day sponsors, the Wilson City Little League. Emerge Ortho, R.A. Jeffries, and Dean's Farm Market. As the top starting lineup being introduced as we speak, here's the Tops getting set to take on the Edenton Steamers for the fourth time this season. Tops come in with a record of four and five for the Steamers. They come in with a mark of two and eight. As the Tops this year, two and one against the Edenton Steamers. One and zero here at Historic Fleming Stadium. Earlier this year, picking up a six to three win. And then on the road at Edenton, the Tops won and one as tonight's starting pitcher for the Tobs number 35 Tyler Grauer gets introduced and this will actually be Grauer's first start since starting last against the Edenton Steamers as his start against the Steamers for the Tobs against the Steamers resulted in a 7-1 to win back on June 1st so it has been 13 days since his last start so with that we will take a break here we will send it down to the field for the singing of our national anthem Tonight's anthem will be performed by Cecilia Collins.
welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page, along with you here, there's Tyler Grower. He gets set to go through his warm-up pitches. As for Grower, taking a look at his statistics overall for Grower, a sophomore out of Indiana State. His numbers on the season for him. As you take a look here at the stance, Grower making just the one start that came against the Steamers as it came in into his Grower worked five innings, allowed just two hits, one run, as he struck out ten Edenton batters in that game, did issue three walks. As he picked up his first win of the season, also gave the Tobbs their second win of the season. That came the day after their opening night victory at home against Peninsula. So Grower, he should be well rested, and fortunately, Mother Nature had not cooperated with him in his last two chances to try to make a start. As they both were rainouts. First one was supposed to be here at Historic Fleming Stadium against the Martinsville Mustangs, but Mother Nature not cooperating, so he was able to start that night. And then he was actually scheduled to start when the Tops were at High Point. Thomasville had warmed up in the bullpen, but Mother Nature halting that game in the top of the first inning, so he was not able to start then. But tonight, it looks like Mother Nature is finally going to cooperate. There is not a cloud in the sky as we are under blue skies here at Historic Fleming Stadium. As he goes through his final tosses here, we'll give you a look here at the Wilson Tobbs defensively. Through the infield, getting the start tonight behind the plate is Jacob Sharon. Caleb Dean gets the start over at first. Jacob Nestor is at second. Pat Frick is at shortstop. And then over at third is Drew Brooks. Through the outfield, new addition for the Tobbs in left field. That's Rigsby Mosley. Just added to the team today in the out center field. It is Brent Doyle. And then in right field, Carson Freeman. And for the Steamers leading things off, stepping in, it'll be the right fielder. As it'll be Bryson Worrell. So it'll be Worrell, Wernicke, and Chufo for the Steamers here. They're in the top of the first thing. The Steamers led by Russ Burroughs, assisted by Reed Gamash. And Matt Garlock. As the first pitch here will miss for a ball is 7.06, the time of our first pitch. Here's the 1 0. That one swung on, skied in the air. Caleb Dean trying to find it in foul territory. It came back on it, but he was able to stay with it. And so, Worrell is a quick out. The PF3. So that'll bring up the third baseman as it'll be number 29, and it will be Anthony Warnicke, a junior out of LIU Brooklyn from Larkspur, Colorado. Steps into the left-handed batter's box. Lefty-lefty matchup. That one swung on. Hit out to left, ranging back for it is Mosley, and he makes the catch. So Rigsby Mosley gets his name into the stat sheet for the tops. And two quick outs here for Grower. So that'll bring up Rich Chufo, the sophomore out of Brown University from Medford, New York. The shortstop. Chufo batting 394 on the air. had a nice start to the season. Four home runs, six RBIs, eight runs scored. A pair of stolen bases. Takes the first pitch for a called strike. For Chufo. Went 0 for 1 on the 12th at Peninsula. That was a 1 0 loss for the Steamers, their last outing. Steamers have dropped each of their last two, falling 9 6 against Martinsville and then 1 0 against Peninsula. Their last win came on the road at Wilmington, a big 7 1 win. For that, dropped a 16 10 slugfest against Peninsula. So, varying ends of the run scoring spectrum there. 0 2 pitcher from Grower is going to miss slow and inside. He's trying to work the 1 2 3 inning. Jacob Sharon will go through the signs behind the plate. Here's the offering. That one is swung on, poked out to right. Freeman trying to range in for it. He won't get to it. And that will be a two on single for Chufo to right field. Because that'll be his 14th hit of the summer. Put a base runner on.
So stepping in here now for the Steamers is the designated hitters. It's Harris. Another lefty-lefty matchup as this first pitch will miss. And actually going back to the first meeting between these two teams when Grower went the five innings and struck out ten in that game. Chufo did have one hit against Grower. He came in the fourth inning. Zane Harris awaiting the 1-0 offering. And that one will be caught on the outer half. Chufo taking his lead out there at first. For Zane Harris, a redshirt freshman out of Wright State University from Mansfield, Ohio. The swings there at the 1-1. Skies in the air. Brooks is going to give it a look. And he won't be able to make a play on it. As it went out of play. So the count to go to a ball and two strikes. For Harris, batting 316 on the air. Two home runs, four RBIs. Five runs scored. Of those six hits that he has, two of those are doubles to go along with the two home runs. Bats here with a runner on first. Grauper will take a look over at the runner. He's off and going. The pitch is swung on. Chopped into the glove of the first baseman, Caleb Dean. And then he steps on the bag. So the runner in motion does nothing as the steamers will strand a runner on base. And we'll head to the bottom of the first inning. So for the Tobs, we'll give you a look at their lineup that they will send to the plate here tonight against the starter, Casey Queener, for the Edenton Steamers. Leading things off in center field, it'll be number seven, Brenton Doyle. Batting second, it's the third baseman, number five, Drew Brooks. Shortstop, Pat Frick, he bats third, wears number 22. Batting fourth, it's the right fielder, number 13, Carson Freeman. Batting fifth, making his first start tonight. For the Tobs will be the left fielder, number 25, Rigsby Mosley. Batting sixth, the first baseman, number eight, Caleb Dean. Batting seventh, it's the designated hitter, 19, Ben Fazo. Batting eighth, it's the catcher, number 12, Jacob Sharon. Batting ninth, it's the second baseman, number six, Jacob Nestor. And then batting, excuse me, not batting 10th, the starting pitcher today would be Tyler Grauer. As they will do their work against Casey Queener, the starter for the Edenton Steamers. He wears number 24, Queener, a junior from Belmont University in Brentwood, Tennessee. Six foot one, 210 pounds. Take a look here at the numbers on the year for Queener. And this will be his third start of the season, his fourth appearance. He has an 0-2 record. He's worked 12 innings, has allowed eight runs on nine hits, has struck out 14 batters while walking just one. Has allowed four home runs, though, so an ERA of six. So the strikeout to walk ratio, very good, but the home runs, a little bit more than what you'd like to see. And strikeouts per nine rate at 10.5. So we'll see what the Tobs can do against Queen. Coming off of a win in their last outing, snapping a two-game losing streak, picking up a 7-3 to three win here at home against Wilmington. And in that game, the Tobs had to survive three runs in the top of the first by scoring the last seven runs of the game. First pitch here is going to be a called strike to our leadoff batter, Bretton Doyle, out of Shepherd University. And the 0-1, that will miss. Good take there by Doyle. Doyle on the season batting 250. Takes this for strike two. This will be his 10th game. Nine for 36 at the plate with seven runs scored. One double, a team best, two home runs, and then four RBIs. Here's the 1-2, and that one is a breaker in the dirt. Not offering it, it was Doyle. Queener sits, delivers a little bit of a pause. That one skied in the air. A look for by the catcher, but that will be off the top of the grandstand. There's just no opportunity there for Wegman. Wegman will go through the signs here. Queener sets, delivers the 2-2 pitch. That one giving a ride out to the left center field gap. This one's going to be down. That goes to the wall. 
Doyle is heading for second. He's looking third. He gets the wave, but now he's going to pull up. And he'll have to head back to second, even though head coach Brian Hill in his first year, he was given the go sign. It'll be a leadoff double for Brenton Doyle. And for Doyle, that will be a second double of the year. Tough to believe that's just a second double with how he's been hitting the baseball here. So that will bring up Drew Brooks. He'll step into the left-handed batter's box. Third baseman out of Missouri Baptist. For Drew Brooks on the year, batting 233. This is ninth game, seven for 30 at the plate. Three runs scored, a double, a home run, and a team best, eight RBIs. Picked up four of those with one swing of the bat. Here on CPL opening night against Peninsula. Takes a pitcher outside of the zone. So the top's an early runner in scoring position. Trying to see if they can flip the script here and take an early lead. Steamers playing a little bit defensively on the left side of the field as taking a strike here is Brooks. And it would be rather interesting to see if Brooks does go to the left side of the field. The only play time he's went to the left side of the field was for the grand slam. As he majorly is going to go to right field. Has some pretty big room between first and second. As this one, I'm going to say, catches the inside part of the plate. So count now one and two. Queen are taking a big breath out there out of the mound. He gets the signs. We'll take that look back at Doyle. The offering, and that one breaks in the dirt. And Doyle it was about halfway this time to the hill. Just head back to the base. Shortstop Pat Frick in the end next circle. Frick batting in the number three spot tonight. So it's a 2-2 pinch that will be coming here to the batter, Drew Brooks. Here's the offering. That one misses outside, and the count is now full. Three balls and two strikes. Brooks right up on that chalk line of the left-handed batter's box. They set up inside. The pitch is golfed down the right field line, but that one will go well foul down towards the steamer's bullpen. Tom was there the other night, snapping that two-game losing streak. Set a season high in hits, also tied a season high in runs. Pitch here is hit down the left field line, giving a chance to the third baseman Warnicky, and he can't get there. So it'll just be a long foul ball. As the Tobbs picked up seven runs on 11 hits. And they allowed seven hits, but just the three runs in the first inning to Wilmington came off of the three-run home run by Danny Wanbeck. After the big first inning, allowed just three hits. Here's the 3-2 pitch, and it's chopped foul now towards the Steamers dugout. A little bit of a battle over there for the foul ball. And the Steamers trying to see if they can track down that foul ball early and help out their teammates. So the count will stay full here. Another 3-2 pitch to Drew Brooks. And he drives this one foul right again over towards the Steamers' dugout. This one was right at head coach Russ Burroughs, though. So this will be the 10th pinch of the at-bat to Drew Brooks, who has fouled off each of the last four pitches. With a runner, Brenton Doyle out at second after the leadoff double to left center. 3-2 pitch is swung on sky in the air. Wegman will give it a look, but that will go off the top of the grandstand and will stay alive. Are you insured? If not, then call Lori Thomas. So good battle here early on for Drew Brooks. At the least, just helping his batter in the on deck circle. And Frick trying to see some pitches here from Casey Queener. So 
Now playing back behind the bag over at first. His sells. Pitch here is going to be fouled. So a sixth consecutive foul ball. And if you're Drew Brooks, you're hoping that you can come out of this with either a ball four or something to get you on base. There's too much work done here at the plate, even though it will be a tip of the cap from the steamers and some high fives from your team. It's just for working this type of a bat. You love to try to get on base. 3-2 pitch again is fouled off of Brooks. He just got a piece of that one. So we'll do it again, a eighth. 3-2 pitch here. Pitch number 13 of the at-bat. Still nobody out here. Just two batters into the bottom of the first inning. Doyle had the double to center. Pitch here. Up and in. Ball four. So a beautiful at-bat there for Drew Brooks. As he's able to get on base with a walk. After falling off several good pitches from Casey Queener. That's just the second walk of the year for Casey Queener. Who struck out 14 batters and walked just one coming into the start. So now that'll bring up the shortstop, Pat Frick, out of Wake Forest. Frick batting 176 on the This is his 10th game. Six for 34 with a double, four runs scored, one RBI. Takes the first pitch here for a ball. Even though some good velocity there from Queener. Wegman sets a blow outside. That's where the pitch goes, and unfortunately, it's going to miss. That looked like a good pitch, but no call from the home plate umpire. We'll also give you a look here at some of the games taking place across the Coastal Plain League. There's a full schedule on the slate for this Thursday evening. Here's the 2-0 pitch. That one misses up in the zone for all three. Already a final between Peninsula and and Martinsville as they are playing a doubleheader today. Peninsula winning game number one, three to nothing in seven innings. Also top of the first between Macon and Florence. And then bottom of the first inning between Wilmington and Holly Springs. Both of those teams are already under the scoreboard. Pitch here will be a called strike as Frick takes the all the way. Also bottom of the first inning between Gastonia and Ashboro. Gastonia putting two runs in the top of the first. Then top of the second, Forest City at home has a one to nothing lead against High Point Thomasville. Here's the 3-1. That one's skied in the air. Frick tosses the bat away. Going back for it is Jones, and he makes the catch. And so a tough first out there for Frick as he can't move the runners over. So that will bring up Carson Freeman, the right fielder out of East Stroudsburg University. For Carson Freeman on the air batting 150, and this will be his eighth game, his seventh start. Three for 20 at the plate with three runs scored, a double, and three RBIs. And he has runners here at first and second. The leadoff double by Doyle, then the walk to Brooks. Queener delivers that breaking ball. will catch the lower part of the zone. Also top of the second inning, Savannah at Lexington County. Both those teams tied at one. And then scoreless in the top of the second inning between Moorhead City and Fayetteville. A one pitch from Queener is going to miss slow and outside as they had Freeman leaning over the plate. Trying to get a full look at that one. Runners going, but no throw from Wegman. So that's a double steal for the Tobs and a pair of Tobs. Reaching base safely, courtesy of Travel Easy is one, two, three. So for Doyle, that will be his fourth stolen base. He's now four for four. And for Brooks, that will be his second stolen base, now two for three on the air. Pitch here is swung on, but fouled out of play over on the third base side. So they can't leave it up now. Two balls and two strikes. So a really big RBI opportunity here for Carson Freeman. With Rigsby Mosley in the on-deck circle for the Tobs. Long looking for Queener. 
Here's the pitch home, and that one is fouled down the first baseline past first base coach Jim Leggett. Assistant coach for the Tops in his first season, along with Calvin Brinkley. As the Tops led by first year head coach Brian Hill, but definitely not new to the Coastal Plain League. Led these Edenton Steamers. Actually led them to a Pettit Cup. 2-2 pitch here is inside. Was that off of Freeman? I believe they're going to say that he missed it somehow. So the count will be full 3-2. Second time that Queener has went to a 3-2 count and the top's better here in the bottom of the first. Still just one out here in the bottom of the first inning. Top's threatening. Runners take their lead from second and third. Here's the pitch, and it's a called strike three as Freeman started to toss the bat. As that'll be a strikeout for Queener in the second out of the inning. So we'll see what Rigsby Mosley can do in his first at bat for the Tobs. For Mosley, he'll don jersey number 25, a freshman this year at Troy University out of Maitland, Florida. Mosley, 6'3", 190, steps into the left-handed batter's box. Here's the pitch from Queener, and he takes it up in the zone. Mosley this year played 46 games, made 41 starts. He batted 338 with five home runs, which was tied for the team lead and drove in 41 runs, even though that wasn't tied for a team lead. That's, that's crazy. Those are some nice defensive numbers. He also had a 412 on base percentage and a 563 slugging percentage and stole six bases and committed just one error as an outfielder. Takes this one right at the belt for a college strike one. So the Tobbs now at runners at second and third and two away. And as Doyle led off the inning with the double and then Brooks worked the walk. Both runners stole second and third after Frick had popped up to second. Here's the 1-1 one -one and that one breaks in for a college strike two. So Casey Queener trying to see if he can work around some early trouble that he had in this inning. Strand a pair of tobs on the bases. Runners tank their leads. Queener asking his catcher Wegman to go through the signs again. Now he set the pitch, he swung at it and missed. Actually, that might have been fouled off. And that went off of Wegman and he is not liking that one all that much. As that one caught the bare hand. Up in the zone was swinging was Mosley. And somehow just got a piece of it. And head coach Russ Barrero is going to come out and check on his catcher, Wegman. Make sure that he's okay. He came up right away. Just shaking that hand around. His, his, catch, his coach will go over and pick up his catcher's glove. He'll get a round of applause here from the Fleming Stadium crowd. Going to throw a couple tosses here with his pitcher, Casey Queeners. That is on the throwing hand. Won't make things all that easier, at least for the time being, if he has to worry about throwing anything. But hopefully, as his thought is going, he won't have to worry about it here. As his pitcher, Casey Queener, is heading the count. One ball, two strikes. Two outs here in the bottom of the first inning. Tobbs looking to try to get on the scoreboard first. They're going to need a big hit here from Rigsby Mosley. The one, two. Has swung on a high chopper into the glove. And the pitcher drops it. Tobbs are going to get a run. And not happy with himself as Casey Queener. He had a raid into the glove. And then it popped out. And then he fell down to the grass. And safe at first will be Rigsby Mosley. And the Tobbs take a one to nothing lead on a run powered by a green light. As that will be an E1 on the pitcher, Casey Queener. And the Tobbs have runners on the corners as they lead one to nothing. Here's the first pinch that will miss low to the first baseman, Caleb Dean. For Caleb Dean, batting 167 on the air. This is his sixth start in his eighth game. Three for 18 at the point with a pair of doubles and four RBIs. Really has played nicely as of late for the Tobbs, filling in there at first base. Here's the 1-0. He takes that one for a call strike. 
for Dean with those three hits on the season. The junior out of Missouri Baptist taking a look at his game log. He picked up both of those hits, well, two of those three hits, and the two for four effort against Wilmington. He drives this one out to center, but lining it up and making the catch will be Jefferson, and that will do it. So the Tobs do get a run on the air by the pitcher, Casey Queener, but will leave two runners on base. And the Tobs have an early lead as this will send this one to a timeout. As you're watching Wilson Tobs Baseball here on CPLBaseball.tv. From our family to yours, we promise the best quality in our Scott Farm sweet potato products. Whether served as healthy wedges or crunchy chips, we take pride in serving our community and our country. Locally grown and hand-picked, our chips provide the perfect choice for your game day snacks. Whether hitting a home run or cheering on the sidelines, our products ensure a healthy snack nearly everyone will enjoy. You're, You're always safe, safe at home, home with Scott, Scott Farms. Farms. So what makes Mobile Mini the most secure choice for portable storage? It's our all-steel construction, patented tri-cam locking system, and container guard locks that come together to provide the most secure portable storage solution in the business. Our standard containers combine exceptional security with excellent value utilizing exterior locking bars for access and may require an extra hand. This system is ideal for construction situations where access is infrequent. For even greater ease and convenience, our premium container delivers Mobile Mini superior security with our easy access design. Doors easily open with one hand, making it ideal for frequent retail or commercial use. Whichever way you go, you can't go wrong. Locking in the superior quality, security, and convenience of Mobile Mini. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along with you here as we get set for the top of the second inning. A one to nothing lead for the Tobs after able to score from third was Brenton Doyle on the air by Casey Queener as he thought he was going to be able to get out of the inning of the high chopper off the bat of Rigsby Mosley as it just came popping out of his glove, and then he had fell down to the grass. And luckily for the Tobbs, Mosley hustling down that first baseline was able to make things tough for Queener as he tried to lob it over there, but was not in time. So for the Steamers here in the second, that'll be the first baseman, Sells, to step in and lead things off. It'll be Sells, Wegman, and Gardner, the five, six, and seven batters. As the one pitch is going to miss here from Tyler Grower, who did along with the two out single by Chufo in the first, but was able to work around it. So Stells, a sophomore out of Heartland Community College from West Des Moines, Iowa, takes a strike two call. Stells, six foot three, 225 pounds. Got the air batting 200. Awaits the one-two offering here, and that one is taken up and away. Four sells, three hits in 15 at-bats. Two runs, one double, two RBIs. Struck out seven times, has walked once, been hit by a pitch twice. The two-two here is strung out of his strike three. And Edward Jones, Chris Collins strikeout, our first of the night. So that's a nice start to the top of the second inning as that'll bring up the catcher as it is Wegman. Took that foul ball off of the throwing hand there in the bottom of the first. T.J. Wegman, a sophomore from Binghamton University out of Appalachian, New York. Six foot one, 200 pounds. Wegman on the year batting 160. He is four for 25 to point with a double. One run scored. No RBIs. Has worked six walks, though. But struck out nine times. So he steps into the left-handed batter's box, a lefty-lefty matchup. And the pitch here going to miss. So Grower with the bases empty. Delivers the offering swung on foul down the first baseline. Because that'll get past the Steamers' first base coach to try to make that stab. Yeah. 
So the 2-1 offering will be coming here from Grauer. Gets the signs from Sharon. The pitch is going to be low. Looks like it might have caught that bottom plane there right around the knees. But a good count here for the catcher, Wegman. Here's the pitch. He chops this one foul. And this time, this one will be played by the first base coach. So we'll see here who will win in this 3-2 count. We saw Queener get into two of those against the Tobs in the bottom of the first inning, including a beautiful bat by Drew Brooks. 3-2 pitch here is swung on and fouled into the netting. Over on the third base side. In the end deck circle is the left fielder, Gardner. Payoff pitch once again. This one is up in the zone. Wegman started off for it, but he held up. So that will be a one-out walk. So for Grauer, that'll be his fourth walk he has issued this season. With the strikeout to start this inning of Sells, he now has 14 strikeouts. Look over to the runner. Now the pitch home, and that one will list outside. For Gardner, where's jersey number 18? Six foot tall, 185 pounds, a junior from Belmont University out of Maryville, Tennessee. A teammate of our starting pitcher, Casey Queener, for the Steamers. Lefty righty matchup, the 1 0. That one swung out of mist. Swinging right through it was Gardner. Gardner batting 304 on the air. This is his ninth game of the season. A homer, five RBIs. One run scored also has a pair of stolen bases. Seven for 23 at the plate. Has also worked eight walks. Struck out just four times. Swings and misses though here at a 1-1 pitch. And is now behind the count one and two. Sharon giving the signs. Brower keeping a little bit of attention on the runner. Wegman over at first. Here's the offering, and that one misses over into the left-handed batter's box. So no offer by Gardner. So it's a two-two count, one way here in the top of the second inning. Here's the pitch, swung out and missed strike three. The fastball and is able to get past the bat of Gardner for the second out of the inning. So the second, Edward Jones, Chris Collins, strike out of the inning for Tyler Grower. And so that'll bring up the second baseman as it is number six, Tyler Jones, a sophomore from Chihuahua University. So Jones will step in, batting 0-67 on the air. It's been a tough start for him. This is his sixth game played. And he's 1 for 15 at the point with a run scored. One RBI. Has struck out five times to two walks. Also has two sacrifice hits on the season. Jumps ahead in the count here, 1-0. Jones the number eight batter in the Edenton lineup. So the number nine batter, Jefferson, in the on-deck circle. Lefty, righty matchup. Grower, the look over to first. With Wegman leaning a little bit, the pitch here. That one paints the outside corner. Evens the count out. For the catcher, Wegman, who was over there at first. Wegman on the season this year has not attempted a stolen base. So he's probably just trying to see if he can get in the head of Grower. Being held on by the first baseman, Dean. Here's the 1-1 pitch. That one swung on into the glove of Drew Brooks, who tosses it back towards the pitcher's mound. And that will do it for the Steamers in the top of the second as they'll strand another runner on base after the one-out walk was worked by a Wegman. And Tyler Grower recording his first two strikeouts of the night. And that in for the Tobs. 
in the bottom of the second. They'll have their seven, eight, nine batters as it'll be Fazo, Sharon, and Nestor to see what they can do against the starter, Casey Queener, after he gave up the run on the air in the first inning. As we're watching Slugger trying to race around the base pass, and it looked like Slugger was taken down. And he's not going to be allowed to go home. So a nice job there by the Pizza Inn mascot to prevent Slugger from winning that run around the bases. As take a look here at the out of town scoreboard, as we did earlier, have some finals to pass along. It was just one a doubleheader between Peninsula and Martinsville. That first game, Peninsula picking up a three to nothing win. So with that win, Peninsula now 8-2 on the season. And Martinsville falls to 5-6. So actually, we'll take a look at the division standings while we have a chance. So Peninsula with 8-2, they keep their hole on first place. So with that loss, Martinsville now 5-6. and six. So Tobbs win here tonight. Barring what Martinsville and Peninsula do in game number two would put the Tobbs back into second place. And then Edenton at 2-8. Is actually in that second game, Martinsville might have to hold up on what I just said as they've taken a 4-1 to lead in the bottom of the second inning against Peninsula. They were trailing that second game of the doubleheader by a score of 1-0, but they're now 4-1 to in that one. As we get set here for the bottom of the second inning, as it'll be Ben Fazo to step in. Fazo. The junior from LaSalle out of Media PA. For Fazo on the season, batting 074, 2 for 27 at the play. This is his eighth start of the year's ninth game. Three runs scored. Has an RBI. He's worked four walks, but struck out five times. Had in the count here, ball and no strikes. And a strike going to be called here. They're out of the hand of Queener. Jacob Sharon in the on deck circle for the tops. Bottom third of their lineup. 1 1 as that one falls off the table, catches the outside corner. Good pitch there from Queener. So both teams with one hit to this point. 1 2 pitch, and that one was just followed back. Faso caught off a little guard, had a little inside out swing there. Was able to make contact with it. Wegman going through the signs. The pitch, that one swung on. That's going to be through the hole on the left side. Into left field, and Ben Fazo has himself a leadoff single here in the second inning. So nice job by Fazo. He was able to wait back on the breaking ball from Queener. And just had enough on it to get it past the shortstop, Chufo. So that will bring up the catcher, Jacob Sharon. Yeah, Sharon, who wears jersey number 12, a junior out of Louise Tana Monroe from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Sharon is going to take the first pitch inside for a ball. And for Sharon season, looking for his first 10-0 for five at the plate. This will be his third game, his third start. Takes this one inside as well. So the count, two balls, no strikes. Leading over first is Ben Fazo. Here's the pitch, that one misses up and away, and the count is now 3-0. Sharon wouldn't mind a walk to allow him to reach base the first time this season for the tops. The 3-0 pitch, that'll be right down Broadway, though. So you'll have to see at least one more. Let's see if he can get one to his liking here. Double play depth up the middle for the Steamers. Here's the pitch, and that misses ball four. And Jacob Sharon has his first walk of the season. And just like we had in the first inning, the first two batters of the inning get out via a hit and then a walk. So that will draw a conference on the mound here. 
as the shortstop Chufa came in. And now one of the assistant coaches for Edenton making his way out to the mound. The chat thing's over as there is a pitcher stretching down in the Edenton bullpen down the right field line. And so now that conversation has broken up on the mound. So the batter will be the second baseman, number six, Jacob Nestor. Nestor, a sophomore out of Catawba from Kernersville, North Carolina. And for Nestor in the season, batting 286, six for 21 at the plate with a double, a triple, a pair of RBIs, and four runs scored. Also has worked five walks. And it's his RBI and that triple coming at Martinsville it would lead to be the only hit and the only run of the game for the Tobs. And bunted by here by Nestor. Queener picks it up. His throw is not in time. The first baseman, Sells, came down as over there was the second baseman, Jones. They kind of got crossed up. The throw from Queener was high in the air. And Arthur Sells tried to come down with it. And now head coach and now the head coach for the steamers Russ Burrows is going to come out and have a chant here with the umpire and now maybe the umpire in the field is going to confer with the home plate umpire but right now it stands to be that the tops would have the bases loaded as it was a bunt by Nestor and then the pitcher Queener made a lob throw over to first and the umpires are going to confer that the runner is safe, so unfortunately that'll be the second E1 of the game for Rush, or for, excuse me, for Casey Queener as Russ Burrows makes his way back to the Edenton dugout. So Nestor reaches, so base is loaded for the top of the order. Brenton Doyle steps in, already one for one with a double and a run scored. As the pitch here is going to miss for a ball. So Faso is at third, Sharon at second, Nestor is at first. They'll play in here at the corners defensively, do the steamers. And this one misses low in the count out too now, and then the steamers going double playing depth up the middle. But obviously, depending on how Doyle plays it here, might be looking for the force out at home. Runners take their leads from all three bases. Queener getting the signs. From Wegman, the pitch is up and it's ball three. So for Casey Queener, who had come into this start today for the Steamers, having issued just one walk, has walked two already in the game. And this 3-0 will be right down the middle. It's taking all the way was Doyle. So now a 3-1. Here out of the hands of Queener, and that is going to be a called strike on the outer half. Doyle started to go, but I think maybe he would have thought second is mine. That's close enough, maybe they called. So the count now full to Britton Doyle. Another 3-2 count here for Queener. His third already. The offering swung on. That one's head out to left center. Going back for a Jefferson. Can he make the catch? He did. They'll tag the runner at third. And so the Tobs will get the one, but what a play by Jefferson out there in left center as he was able to bring that one in as the runners at first and second had to go back, but Ben Fazo is able to tag up from third. So another run powered by Greenlight on the RBI by Brenton Doyle. So that'll bring up Drew Brooks. So for Brenton Doyle with the RBI, that'll be his fifth RBI of the season. And the first pitch here to Drew Brooks will be in there for a cold strike. Brooks walked in his first at bat and then stole second before being left at third base. And a very nice at bat his first time up. And as he pops this one in the air, Queener is going to call for it. He calls everybody off. And the runners have to go back. There's Queener. 
They didn't let anybody else play, and he wanted the out. And so now two away. As that'll bring up the shortstop, Pat Frick. He popped up to the second baseman, Jones. His first time up. That came with Doyle and Brooks both on base and nobody out. So the Tom's a two to nothing lead, a run in each of the first two innings. Here's the pitch. That one is swung on. Jones, excuse me, Jefferson has it lined up, and Jefferson will make the catch as Frick just didn't get enough on it. And so the Tobbs will leave a pair of runners on base. But they do play one to take a two to nothing lead. We've played two full here to Stork Fleming Stadium. As we'll step aside, you're watching Wilson Tobbs Baseball here at CPLBaseball.tv. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along here as we get set for the top of the third inning. Tobbs, a 2 to nothing lead against the Steamers. As it'll be back to the 9-1-2 batters here for the Steamers as they will complete their first trip through the lineup. And it'll be the center fielder, Jefferson, who made that nice catch on the sacrifice fly by Doyle there in the second inning. Golfs this one foul over on the first base side, so he's quick behind the count. No balls and two strikes. So for Anthony Jefferson on the season, hitting 190, as he is 4 for 21 at the plate, three runs scored, also three walks, four strikeouts. Watches this one miss outside. As Jefferson batting in the number nine spot. Pitch here, swung out and missed. As the junior from Chawan can't make contact there. And that is the third Edward Jones, Chris Collins strikeout of the game for starter Tyler Grauer. So for the Steamers, first time through the lineup, they get just two base runners, a single from Chufo and a walk to Wegman. And then strikeout three times against Grauer. So that will bring up the right fielder, Worrell. As he swings and misses the first pitch, popped up in foul territory to Caleb Bean in his first event. That got the game underway. Sharon will go through the signs. Grauer finds one to his liking, gives the nod. Here's the 0-1. That one swung on and missed. That was nasty. That one just kind of tied up the wrist of Worrell. The third baseman, Warnick, in the on-deck circle. What a way here in the top of the third inning. The 0-2 pitch, that one was open in the zone. And I don't even think that Worrell got set like he wanted to offer at it. Just knew right away that wasn't going to be something to offer at. And the pitch here is fouled off of Sharon. That might have caught a little bit of his catching hand, excuse me, his throwing hand. He's quickly, though, going to wave off the trainers and coaching staff. They quickly kind of got up to come out and check on him. He waved him off. Another quick look here around the Coastal Plain League. Top of the third inning, a 3-2 to two lead for Holly Springs at home against Wilmington. Also bottom of the third inning, Gastonian Ashboro tied 3-3. Top of the fourth inning, High Point Thomasville has a 4-1 to one lead now against Forest City. Top of the third inning, Lexington County, a 3-1 lead against Savannah. 1-2 pitch here is going to be golf foul down the left field line. That one right off of the handle of the bat. And then bottom of the third inning, Moorhead City. 2-0 uh, lead against Fayetteville. And then bottom of the third inning, game number two of a doubleheader. Martinsville looking to try to split that doubleheader as they are up 5-1 to one against Peninsula. Pitch here is going to be slowing away. Sharon 
Went down into the splits. The county even two balls, two strikes. As Peninsula won the opening game of the doubleheader, three to nothing against the Mustangs. Grower now delivering the 2-2 pitch, and that one swung out and missed strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Grower to start the third. He's got four in the last two innings, and that'll bring up the third baseman, Warnicky. So Anthony Warnicky flied out to Rigsby Mosley his first time up. Went the opposite way. Sharon giving the signs. And I believe Warnicky could not hold that one up. And then it actually knocked the catcher's mask of Sharon off as it had hit in front of the plate and then didn't touch the bat of Warnicky, but it hit Sharon. Warnicky, in the last time that the Steamers made their way here, was able to work a pair of walks, also recorded a pair of RBI hits, also struck out. He's behind on the count here, Boyd and two. Lefty, lefty, the matchup, and this one again in the dirt. Trying to see if they can get Warnicky to chase at it. Hoping the inning stays alive. The shortstop Chufo in the on-deck circle. Here's the one-two pitch. That one is going to be slowing away. You kind of see right out of the hands. Grower held onto that one just a little bit too long. Tried to paint the outside corner. Two-two pitch. Swung on right back at Grower. He's got a hustle to try to get the out. The throw is not going to be in time. So that was a laser right back at Grower. And then it came out of his glove. He had to try to chase it down. And then he wasn't able to make the throw in time. So that will be an infield single for Warnicky. Second hit of the game for the Steamers. So he continues his nice season series against Wilson. So that'll bring up the shortstop Chufo at the first hit of the game for the Steamers. As Edenton has now had one base runner in each of the first three innings. There's the pitch for Grower. Swung on that to Laser into left field. So it's back-to-back two-out singles for Warnicky and Chufo, who have all of the offense so far in the two and three spots. Now batting, wearing number 33. First runner of the game in scoring position for Edenton. And that will bring up Zane Harris, the designated hitter. Grounded out to Dean his first time up at that high chopper. That Dean was able to come down with. Luckily, he was right there at the bag. So the second hit of the game, third hit of the game for Edenton. Lefty, lefty matchup. Grower looks back to second. Here's the pitch. That one is in the dirt. Sharon, a nice job to glove it. So Zane Harris trying to come through here for his Edenton Steamers as they trail the tops two to nothing. Wilson getting a run in each of the first and second innings. And that was step off, and Crowder didn't throw back, but that was an interesting time for Warnicky to get back to second. Yeah, some of his teammates ribbing him over down the first baseline. So now they'll get back into their leads. Grower's 1-0 is swung on. Hit to second. Gloved by Nestor. The throw in time to Caleb Dean. And the Steamers unfortunately leave a pair of runners on base. The Tops hold their 2-0 lead. As we go to the bottom of the third inning. Following the 4 three ground out. So the Tobs like to thank their game day sponsors, Wilson City Little League, Emerge Ortho, Dean's Farm Market, and R.A. Jeffries. Take a look at some of the upcoming home games and promotions as it'll be a doubleheader here at Historic Fleming Stadium on Saturday, June 16th as the Martinsville Mustangs are here for a pair of two seven-inning games. First game will start at 6 p.m. Gates will open at 5. It'll be Star Wars Be a Hero Night along with Slugger's Birthday and Mascot Mania as there will be free admission for kids 12 under 
that dress up for Star Wars to be a hero night. Tom's also home on Sunday, June 17th, as it's the Asheboro Copperheads who come in for a 6 p.m. first pitch. Gates will open at 5 o'clock. Going to be bang for your buck Sunday and Wiener Wonka night here at Historic Fleming Stadium. And then on Monday, June 18th, it's the North Wake Fungo, and that will be a 12 p.m. first pitch as Gates will open at 11, as it'll be Super Splash Day here at Historic Fleming Stadium. As we'd also like to thank our exclusive partners, Thomas Law Attorney, Screenlight, and Emerge Ortho, along with thanking French West Vaughn NC by train and Travel Easy as one, two, three. And stepping in to lead things off for the Tobs will be the right fielder, Carson Freeman. And he will sky this first pinch, but it will be foul. Over on the third base side. So Freeman was a strikeout victim of Casey, Casey Queener in his first at bat. That came in the first. 0-1 pitch here is swung out again, skied in the air. Chufo ranging back for another left fielder, Gardner, coming in. And it'll be Gardner to make the catch. And there will be one away. So it goes down as an F7. That'll bring up the left fielder, Rigby Mosley. Recorded an RBI in his first bat for the tops, even though he reached on the error by the pitcher, Casey Queener. Both errors in this game have been charged to Queener, unfortunately, just two tough luck plays. Here's the first one, and that one's going to be fouled off of the right ankle of Mosley, but he looks to be okay. Home play umpire went to try to track down the baseball. So the base is empty here, one away in the bottom of the third and it tops a two to nothing lead. Fourth meeting of the season between these two teams. Pitch here is going to be fouled back. As the Tobs and Steamers this season play a total of 12 times. After the realignment of the Coastal Plain Link splitting up into four divisions this year. 0-2 pitch on its way, and that one is low. Good eye there by Rigsby Mosley. Actually give you a look here at the standings around the CPL over in the south. Savannah leading the way at 8-2. Florence 5-5, five five. Lexington County 5-6, and, and Macon 4-6. and 1-2 pitch, that one will miss up and away. In the east, it's Moorhead City at 8 and 2. Wilmington in second at 5 and 6. Fayetteville at 4 and 5. And then Holly Springs at 3 and 9. 2 2 pitch from Queener is golf foul. And it's a play by Rigsby Mosley. Keep the bat alive. And then over in the west, Ashboro at 6 and 4. They have a slim lead over Forest City, who is 6 and 5. And High Point Thomasville, who is 6 and 5. And then Gastonia at four and seven, so things very tight in the West. I guess you could call it the wild, wild West. Another foul ball here by Rigsby Mosley. As the Tobs after this one might have to ask Drew Brooks and Rigsby Mosley for some money for some baseballs with the number that they fouled out of play. Another 2-2 pitch on its way, and that one is going to mess up in a way. Mosley started to swing but was able to hold up on it to the count now three and two. There is action down in the Edenton bullpen. Payoff pitch is swung on into the glove of the first baseman. Sells is going to toss to his pitcher. Will he get there? And they say that Queener is able to get there and beat the runner, Rigsby Mosley, down the line. And that was kind of a weird play for Arthur Sells. He didn't put his pitcher in the best of spots. He... Kind of ran halfway to the bag and then decided to toss it up in the air. But the steamers will record the out at first. So that'll bring up Caleb Bean. He will step in. Wolf for one in the game and he fouls off the first pitch of the bat, which also was pitch number 70 of the night for Casey Queener. So Dean hit the fly ball to Jefferson that ended the first inning. 
And now he golfs at this one, can't make contact, so the count quickly 0-2. Tobbs have left a pair of base runners on in each of the first two innings. 0-2 pitch is swung out of his strike three. And so it's a 1-2-3 inning for Casey Queener as he records his second strikeout of the game. As we have played three full here at historic Fleming Stadium. As we'll send this one to a timeout, you're watching Wilson Tobbs Baseball here at TPLBaseball.tv. From our family to yours, we promise the best quality in our Scott Farm sweet potato products. Whether served as healthy wedges or crunchy chips, we take pride in serving our community and our country. Locally grown and hand-picked, our chips provide the perfect choice for your game day snack. Whether hitting a home run or cheering on the sidelines, our products ensure a healthy snack nearly everyone will enjoy. You're, You're always safe, safe at home, home with Scott, Scott Farms. Farms. Whenever you have a chance to give back to the community, it's a special day. I just had the opportunity to help a mother and her three children move into a home. So Mobile Mini is actually more than just the leader in secure storage and office rentals. We are a community player. Giving back is one of Mobile Mini's core values. It's something that's ingrained in us. I take pride in knowing that my efforts in the community is helping to make someone's life better. As we get set for the top of the fourth inning, as it will be the first base, Arthur Sells to step in. Sells struck out swinging his first time. That got the second inning underway. It'll be the five, six, and seven batters. And this one in the dirt as Sharon has to play it off of the hop. So no runs, three hits, two errors, and this one for Edenton. Two runs, two hits, no errors for the Tobbs. As Tyler Grower, before he delivered his pitch there, asked if he could get an exchange from the home plate umpire. So Settles will step back in and get ready. This will be pitch number 50 of the night for Grower. And it will be high for a ball as Sells will jump ahead in the count. The catcher, Wegman, in the on-deck circle. And swinging and fouling off the pitch. Is the first baseman, Sells. Fans, don't forget to be sure to come out to the ballpark on Friday, June 29th for the fifth annual Digging in the Diamond game. Fans can pre-register for free at Saslow's Jewelers in Wilson for your chance to dig for one of several prizes. Featured prizes are a round trip to Las Vegas, four-day cruise, his and her wedding bands, and Tobbs season tickets. As the 2-1 pitch is swung on and missed. Here's the 2-2 from Grower. That one swung on and missed strike three. Strikeout number five of the night for Tyler Grower. Another Edward Jones, Chris Collins, as Sells is down on strikes for the second time tonight. So that will bring up the catcher, Wegman. He walked in his first at bat. There's this one lined over the head of the third baseman, Drew Brooks. And that will be a one-out single. As that one quickly got back in by Rigsby Mosley. So... Wegman has been on base twice tonight. Fourth hit for the Steamers, all of them singles. As that will bring up the left fielder, Gardner. So in two appearances now for Grower, he struck out 15 Edenton Steamers. As he tries to keep his strong performance against them the season going. Lefty-righty matchup here. The pitch is going to be a fastball called for a strike on the outer half. Gardner struck out swinging after Wegman had worked the one-out walk in the second. Pretty good lead for Wegman over at first. We didn't see him do anything his first time on the bases. Just did a lot of jockeying off. This one's in the dirt, but a nice job by Sharon. As he was able to keep that one in front of him. The second baseman, Jones, in the on-deck circle. So for the Steamers, it was a nice bounce-back inning by the starter, Casey Queener. He worked a 1-2-3 one, 
bottom of the third. First time that the Tops hadn't got a base runner on. Pitch here is chopped, and that's going to be through. Brooks going to get to it, and they'll hold the runner Wegman at second, so it's back-to-back one-out singles for the second consecutive inning. Well, actually, it was two-out singles in the third inning, but back-to-back innings where it's been back-to-back hits. So fifth hit of the game for the Steamers. And that will bring up the second baseman as it will be Jones. Tyler Jones in this one, 0 for 1. He lined out to third, his first time up. That ended the first inning. Long look back by Grauer. And now this one in the dirt. They'll ask for time here as they'll get a new baseball. So singles here in this inning from Wegman and Gardner. Wegman stands at second after the inning started with a strikeout to the first baseman, Sells. Jones in the 3-1 count. And out there at second. And they catch Wegman trying to get some signs from his head coach, Russ Burroughs, also trying to get his attention to see what is going on here. Would assume that the runners would be in motion. But they're not this time. Pitches again fouled back. So they tried to roll the dice on the 3-1, but not on the 3-2. Both times, Grower going on the outer half of the plate, getting... Jones to lean out over. See if Jones can come through for his team here or see if Grower and Sharon have the winning combo to try to get the out. Here's the pitch. That one giving a ride down the left field line, but that one is going to be well foul. And so a long foul ball that will keep the bat alive for the second baseman, Tyler Jones. Tops taking the lead with a run in the bottom of the first, then answered with another run off a sacrifice fly from Brenton Doyle in the second. Before they were set down in order in the third. 3-2 pitch in from Grower is inside. No call, and it's ball four. And the steamers have him loaded with one out, and that'll bring pitching coach Jim Leggett out of the dugout as he makes his way out to the mound. So it'll be up to the center fielder out of Chuan, Anthony Jefferson. And you would think here that maybe advantage would be in the favor of the Tobbs as their head coach, Brian Hill, is an assistant coach at Chuan where Jefferson plays his baseball. Jefferson was a very big factor in the lineup for Chuan this year. Had a lot of speed. It was a tough out for them. He struck out swinging in his first at bat. That came to start off the third inning. It was actually back to back strikeouts in that inning for Grower before the Steamers picked up a pair of singles. So the count gets on the mound is over. But a big spot here for the Edenton Steamers, trailing two to nothing on the road here in the top of the fourth inning against Tyler Grower. So the Tobs will play in here at the corners. And they'll play, they'll play depth up the middle. First pitch is going to be a slow for ball to Jefferson. So it's Wegman at third, Gardner at second, Jones at first. Single, single walk. How those runners got on base. The pitch here is swung at and missed. There's Jefferson a little bit off balance. For Grower, he had 66 pitches coming into this at bat. He's going to step off here as Sharon to go through the signs again. And now time was called here by the plate umpires. The runner over at first, Jones, was jockeying off the bag. 1-1 pitch is inside. 
And the count now two and one is backing up just a little bit with Jefferson. Although he's giving Grower some room, not right on the right-handed batter's line. The pitch here swung on skied in the air. Caleb Dean calling for it, trying to track it, makes the catch. And there are now two away as things will change back to the top of the order here for Edenton. So that'll bring up Bryson Worrell. Worrell in this game, 0 for 2, has popped up to Dean in foul territory and has also struck out swinging. Matt's here with the bases loaded. Grower ready to go. First pitch of the at bat. Swung on. Giving a ride down the right field line. Freeman tracking it now into foul territory. Makes the catch on the run. Flying Freeman gets the out. And that'll do it here in the top half of the fourth. As the steamers leave them loaded. And we will go to the bottom of the fourth. As the Tobs will have their 70 and 9 batters do up. So a nice job by Tyler Grower and his defense to get out of that jam. They hold on to their 2 to nothing lead. Fans, don't forget this marks the sixth annual home run for hunger event and is the biggest food drive in Wilson County. So make sure you mark your calendars for Sunday, June 24th. Bring out Ken Goods for free admission to the game. Also a reminder, the Throwback Thursday Thursdays are back at the ballpark this season. Every Thursday, they'll have dollar select beers, discounted draft beers, and half-priced fountain drinks, along with our Farm to Field Farmer's Market, sponsored by Dean's Farm Market. And it's a great Thursday, Thursday here at the ballpark tonight, looking down to the beer garden down the right field line. Don't believe that I can see an empty seat, and if there is, there may be only one or two that I can pick out. So a great atmosphere down the right field line. And it's also coming up, join the Tops players after the game on Thursday, June 21st, for a late night with the Tops at Buffalo Wild Wings, Buffalo Wild Wings the official sports bar of the Wilson Tobbs. As we get set here for the bottom of the fourth inning, it'll be Fanto, Sharon, and Nestor. As back out there for the Steamers is Casey Queener, and why not? He was able to respond to the 1-2-3 third inning, even though the Steamers had action down in the bullpen. See how some games are going across the Coastal plainly. Is bottom of the fourth inning, Holly Springs and Wilmington tied 3-3. Top of the fifth inning, Gastonia trailing Ashboro 6-3. As the Copperheads will be here coming up. And then bottom of the fifth inning, all tied 4-4 between High Point Thomasville and Forest City. And the Copperheads will be here on this weekend on Sunday. So Ben Fiza will step up. There's for Fiza his first time up. He had the single that got past the shortstop Chufo into left field. So he's one for one in the game. Then came around to score on the sacrifice fly from Doyle. 2 0 lead here for the Tops. And the first pitch is going to be a strike out of the hands of Casey Queener. Queener has struck out two batters tonight. Has also issued two walks. Here's the 0-1. That one going to miss inside. Queener came in with a 14-1 differential in the strikeout to walk category. But it was Brooks and Chiron who have been able to work the free passes tonight as this one fouled off over top of the grandstand on the first base side. So the Tobs have scored two runs tonight, but left four runners on base. One-two pitch is just fouled back. As I think Fazo just nicked that fastball with the end of the bat. And the on-deck circle by catcher Jacob Sharon. As the sun's starting to set here in Wilson, North Carolina, lights starting to take effect. One, two, pitch. Going to be off the outer half. And as Wegman trying to frame that one. And really with what the weather we've had over the past week or so, just a beautiful night for baseball here at Fleming Stadium. 
2-2 pitch. She swung on, hit out to center. Jefferson can't get to it. And a two for two night for Ben Fazo. As he leads off the fourth inning with a single. So the Tobs with their third hit of the game. And that'll bring up the catcher, Jacob Chiron, who worked to walk his first time up. So we'll see what he can do. A ready, ready matchup here. Pretty big lead. Fazo's going. The pitch, though, fouled off. And that was a late swing by Chiron. And Fazo was kind of jockeying off the bag, and he just went for it. So Sharon may have not even had time to look up to know that Faze was going, so he'll have to go back. Sure, now the steamer's probably going to pay a little more attention to Faze. And now they will immediately throw over. Ball gets away. is going to go for a second. He'll get there. They're going to send him to third. Here comes the throw, and it's not going to be in time. is in there. So Ben Faze... Got the attention drawn to him after he went down to second. They had to go back on the foul ball. They throw over. It gets away from Sells at first. And then going over to third will be Fazo. So Fazo will reach his destination safely over at third thanks to Travel Easy as one, two, three. So the third error charged to the starter, Casey Queener. Uh, the failed pickoff attempt that will allow the runner to go over. Now ball here, foul down the third baseline by Sharon. So the count 0-2 to the designated, or excuse me, the catcher, Jacob Sharon, the designated hitter, Fazo, over at third. O two 2 again is off the end of the bat, and that actually might have caught some of the hand, too. Of Sharon, so an unlucky there. So tonight for the starter, Casey Queener, we've seen him with a fielding error, a throwing error, and then an error on the pickoff attempt. So has him at an easy time on the mound for Queener. As Jacob Nestor awaits in the on deck circle, he was actually the second batter to reach on an E1 via. A play of Casey Queener. That came to load the bases up in the second. 0-2 count here still on the catcher. Sharon, the pitch from Queener, is inside. That hit him on the elbow. So that'll put runners on the corner. So nonetheless, that at least sets up the potential double play for the Steamers. I don't know if they're going to pull back. We'll see what they do here. There may be a visit on the mound, and there is as Russ Burroughs makes his way out. This may be the end as there's already... A player making his way in from the bullpen down the right field line. So it looks like this is going to be a pitching change before Russ Burroughs even makes it to the mound to take the baseball, and then he gives a shake of the hand to Casey Queener. So we will have a pitching change here. As the new pitcher is going to be number two. As that will be Josh Leeser. Saw Leeser earlier this year. Coming to relief for the Steamers as the Tabs were down in Edenton. As he'll be tasked here with runners on first and third and nobody out in the number nine batter, Jacob Nestor at the plate. So for Sharani, he came into the game tonight, having not been on base this year for the Tabs, and now he's reached twice tonight, a walk and a hit by pinch. We'll get you the details here on John Leeser, a sophomore from the Air Force Academy out of Coronado, California. Six foot one, 210 pounds. And taking a look at the walk this year for Leeser, as he tossed an inning and a third in his first appearance of the season. That came back on June 1st as he struck out a batter and allowed a hit against the Tom. Since then, he has tossed four innings. As he tossed an inning at Holly Springs, gave up a run. It was unearned on a hit, struck out two batters, walked one. And then on June 9th, actually started against Wilmington. That was a win, but he did not pick.
pick up the win. Only tossed three innings, allowed one hit, struck out three batters, walked three batters. So, see what he does here in relief for the Steamers. So, Leister will face Nestor. The number nine batter in the lineup for the Tops. So Lisa, ready to go. Nestor, ready to go. Runners on the corners. Nobody out here for the Tobs. The hold the runner. Sharon on it first. Playing in a couple steps at third is Warnicky. Showing bunt, but not laying a good one down here was Nestor. We saw him do that in his first event. That's how he was able to get on. As the error by the pitcher, Queener. But this one, he tried to go down the first baseline, obviously, with Sells holding the runner on. Tom's a 2-0 lead. One in the first, one in the second. They were scoreless in the third. Leeser gets the signs from his catcher, Wegman. He sets delivers, and that one is low for a ball. Third base coach, Brian Hill, will go through the signs. Got the on-deck circle, Brent Doyle. Top of the lineup for the Tops. Tops just three hits in the game here tonight, too. Then coming from Ben Faso, who stands over at third. Here's the 1-1, one -one, and that one's in there for a strike. Nestor watched that one all the way into the glove. So he's behind in the count. Going to have to look to try to come back here. Battle of the plate. So first two pitches that he saw tonight, he'd went bunt. Here's the one, two. He swings at a high chopper. That's going to get a run in the throw. Not in time. Infield RBI single for Jacob Nestor. And the Tobs have a 3 to nothing lead thanks to Greenlight. So Fazo scores from third. Charon goes down to second. And it's the fourth hit of the game for the Tobs. So that'll bring up Brenton Doyle. RBI there for Nestor. That will be his third RBI of the season. First pitch here is going to be called strike on the outer half of the plate to Brenton Doyle. So seventh hit for Jacob Nestor this year. As that'll help out the batting average came in at 286. Now it looks like the catcher Wegman is going to go out and have a chat with his pitcher, Josh Leister. So this will get charged here as an official mound visit. As the home plate umpire will mark it down and then he'll signal the Edenton dugout. So the Tobs have runners at first and second. Sharon and Nestor. Doyle tonight has picked up a double, scored a run in the first, then delivered the sack fly in the second. But it was a nice play by Jefferson out in left center to make the play. 0-1 pitch here is swung on, and that one's fouled back as Leister changed up speeds on that one. Because he had Doyle out in front of him. Doyle not all that happy himself. He thought he could have sat and Waited on that one a little bit better than he did. So he's behind the count up and two, but that's where Nestor was. And he was able to come through. Wegman gets the signs. Here's the 0-2. That one misses low in the dirt. Good idea there by Wegman and Lacer trying to see if they get Doyle to chase. As they look to try to get the first out of the inning. Tobs have went single, hit batter single. Long looking here, Doyle going to do a nice job to call time. They usually say in that situation, the longer the batter waits, it just helps out the pitcher and the catcher that more. Gets them into their rhythm and timing option. 
Here's the one, two, and that one is swung on. He was handcuffed and bounces off of the shortstop. Everybody's going to be safe. That was booted off of the glove of Chufo. As he was playing back kind of deep, had to run in on it. As he had the runners moving up as he knew that the speed of Doyle down the first baseline. So an E6 on the play, charged to the shortstop Chufo as the bases will be loaded here for the Tobs. So that'll be the fourth air of the game for the Steamers. Pitch here swung, and that's going to be through. RBI single. They're going to send the second run around. Here comes Nestor. He avoids the catcher, and then going down to third, and there safely is going to be Doyle. So the Tobs have him on the corners, and they get two off of the hit by Drew Brooks. And the Tobs now have a 5 to nothing lead as they've played it three here in the bottom of the fourth inning. So aggressive base running there by Nestor as he is able to score on the play. So it was Sharon who scored, and then the hustle of Nestor. And then Doyle goes all the way from first to third as Brooks picks up the single. And this one gets by the catcher. Wegman didn't know where it was, and that's going to allow Brenton Doyle to score. Another run powered by Greenlight, and the Tobs have a 6 to nothing lead. So the Tobs have a four-run inning. Still no outs in the inning, and they have a runner on second now as Brooks... Made the way down. Look back to second by Leaser. This one is swung on. Patrick Frick skies it in the air. And the second baseman, Jones, calling for it. He'll make the catch. And there's one away as the runner, Brooks, has to hold at second. So a wild pitch from Leeser allowed Doyle to score as he didn't help his catcher Wegman out any. As he just tossed that one straight down into the dirt and it ricocheted off of the, I believe it was the foot of Wegman or it was either the plate, but that took a weird hop. And he didn't know where it went. Another bouncer here. Good old 55-foot pitch. So the count here to... Freeman will start out 1-0. Freeman in the game 0 for 2. And struck out looking and flying out to left. Bats here with a runner at second. One away. Four runs home for the Tops. They lead 6 to nothing. Here's the pitch. That one gets by Wegman. He doesn't know where it is. And going down to third is Drew Brooks. So two wild pitches here in the inning for Leeser, and that'll pull the defense in here for the Steamers. 2-0 is swung on, fouled out of play by Freeman. One away here in the inning. For the Tobs, they started the inning single, hit batter single, A6 single, with Brooks plating two off his hit, and Nestor plating one with his RBI infield single. 2-1 coming here to the batter, Freeman, and that one is taken right down Broadway for a called strike. So the count will even up two balls and two strikes. So with that, two RBI single for Drew Brooks. He ups his team lead now to 10 RBIs. And that's also his eighth hit of the season. Defense in here for the Steamers. 2-2 pitch is outside. Ball three, and the count is now full. Couple of pitchers starting to loosen up the arms down in the bullpen. Nobody tossing yet. Hoping that Leeser can navigate through things here. Here's 
is the pitch. That one given a ride out to right. Going back forward is Worrell at the warning track. He'll make the catch, but that will score the runner, Drew Brooks, from third. And it'll be a sacrifice fly for Carson Freeman. And it's another run powered by Greenlight and the Tobbs. Lead at 7 to nothing as they've played at 5 here in the bottom of the fourth. So the base pass now empty with two away. So the Tobbs in their first meeting here at Historic Fleming Stadium against Edenton. They played at five in the bottom of the first of that game. Here they've played at five in the bottom of the fourth. Pitch from Leeser is going to be low for a ball to Rigsby Mosley. He's been on base once tonight, reached on the error by the starter, Queener. Also was given an RBI in the play and then grounded out to Shells at first. Takes this pitch on the outer half. Home plate umpire looked like he was going to make the strike call, but no motion, and that's not going to draw too many pleasant remarks from the Edenton dugout first base side. Leeser sets and delivers, and that one misses low. And for Leeser, he just kind of snaps the glove away after he gets the toss back from Wegman. Not all that happy out there on the mound. He came in to face Nestor after Fazer had reached on the single and Sharon was hit. And this one will be a call strike. So in the inning, two of the five runs charged to the starter, Casey Queener. And then three have been charged to Leeser. Here's the 3-1 offering, and that one is an excuse me swing from Mosley. And the count is now full three and two. Caleb Dean, the number nine batter of the inning for the Tobbs in the on-deck circle. Hoping he can get up. He's 0 for 2 on the night. But first, we'll need something here from Mosley. Payoff pitch is swung out. That one hit out to right center. And this one is going to be caught by Worrell as he runs in front of Jefferson to make the catch. So that'll end the inning. Eight batters come to the plate for the Tobbs. They're able to get five of them in as they take a 7 to nothing lead as we head to the top of the fifth inning here at Historic Fleming Stadium. As you are watching Wilson Top Baseball here on CPLBaseball.tv. So what makes Mobile Mini the most secure choice for portable storage? It's our all-steel construction, patented tri-cam locking system, and container guard locks that come together to provide the most secure portable storage solution in the business. Our standard containers combine exceptional security with excellent value, utilizing exterior locking bars for access and may require an extra hand. This system is ideal for construction situations where access is infrequent. For even greater ease and convenience, our premium container delivers Mobile Mini superior security with our easy access design. Doors easily open with one hand, making it ideal for frequent retail or commercial use. Whichever way you go, you can't go wrong. Locking in the superior quality, security, and convenience of Mobile Mini. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along with you here after a good bottom of the fourth inning offensively for the top. I going to try to see if that gave their starter, Tyler Grower, some confidence after he had a little bit of a shaky fourth inning. Delivers a first pitch here that will miss to the leadoff batter, Warnicky, the third baseman. He is one for two on the night, singled in the third, also flat out to left in the first. After the steamers were able to load the bases in the fourth inning. Lefty-lefty matchup here. That one in there for a strike. It was a strikeout to start the inning by Grower against Sells. 
But then a single, a single, and a walk would load the bases up for the Steamers. But Grauer responded with a pair of fly ball outs in foul territory. The pop fly to the first baseman, Dean, and then the nice running play by Freeman to track it down in foul territory. 75 pitches on this one here from Tyler Grauer. And that breaks in there for a called strike three. As Warnicky got caught there looking again at the dessert tray, and he'll have to go back to the dugout. Six strikeout of the night here for Tyler Grauer. And that will bring up Chufo, who has not had any problems against Grower tonight. He is two for two with a pair of singles. Lefty righty matchup. Grower's pitch here going to be a call strike, and I think it might there be with the batter Chufo. He quickly looked back to the home plate umpire. That one looked like it was blown inside, but Grower will take it. Beige is empty here for Edenton in the top of the fifth. Here's the pitch, and that one swung out and missed. So the count quickly 0-2. Zane Harris, designated hitter in the on-deck circle for the Steamers. 0-2 for two in the game. And a little bit of a wait here, and so wisely, Chufo will ask for time. So six strikeouts for Grauer at this point. That was the first of the looking variety. Here's the 0-2, and that one stayed outside as Sean actually had to come up out of the catcher's stance. He wanted to try to stay down to frame that one, but just wasn't able to. Still room here for Grauer to work. Here's the offering. That one inside, and that one was low, and that one made Chufo back up. So now the count here, even two balls, two strikes. In a spot like this, still feel like the pitcher has the advantage over the batter. And here is the offering, and that one is poked down the right field line. Freeman trying to track it, and he makes the catch. Carson Freeman helps out Grower again, and I think Grower might have to take Freeman out to dinner after this one, depending on how things go. As twice he's helped him down the right field line. So with two outs, that'll bring up Zane Harris, who's 0 for 2 in the game tonight. A pair of ground outs, one to first, one to second. And he swings at this one, gives it around down the left field line, and not able to get to it, it was Rigsby Mosley. And so that one will drop down. And I had the chance earlier today to talk with Rigsby after he got in town, had a chance to take some BP and some infield outfield with the team and asked him kind of how things were going and what his biggest adjustment that he was going to have to make. And he said, well, this is grass here and, and not turf like they have at Troy. So he said immediately that was the first thing, trying to get used to the footing and, and all that. Obviously, they play on grass, but when your home field is turf, it's just a little bit different. This one driven out to left. Can Mosley make it? He can't, but he picks it up on the hop. Kind of got a little bit lucky on that one as he scooped it to the side. But that'll be a two-out hit for Zane Harris, his first of the night. And the sixth single of the game for the Steamers. And I believe that might be the end of the line. If not, it'll at least get the bullpen going. I thought that the Tobs had somebody down there throwing. And ready to go, but this might just be a chance here for head coach Brian Hill. Just to let Grower knows, hey, got the bullpen down there, but we don't want to use it now. We want you to try to get out of the inning. So that was just a quick chat and a visit out there for head coach Brian Hill. As the batter will be Arthur Sells. He struck him out twice, so Maybe that will also give Grower a little bit of confidence to try to finish off the fifth inning. Lefty-righty matchup. Here's the pitch. That one swung out and missed. And that one blew right past the bat of Sells. Struck out swinging to start the second. Struck out swinging to start the fourth. 
But now maybe a chance to strike out to end the fifth. 0-1 oh, offering is going to be low. Sells when it chase it. A couple of score updates to pass along to you as we go along here across the Coastal Plain League. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That's a bounce in the dirt, but Jacob Sharon flashes the leather. Wonder if he took any goalie lessons while he was growing up. Decided to go with a game of baseball over hockey, but the count here, two balls and a strike. Two outs in the inning. Here's the offering, and that one swung on him. It's strike two. Fastball off the outer half of the plate. Bottom of the second inning, Macon has a one to nothing lead against Florence. Bottom of the sixth inning, Holly Springs, four to three lead at home against Wilmington. And top of the sixth inning, all Ashboro they lead. They get some Grizzlies six to five. Two two pitch, swung out and missed strike three. Seventh strikeout of the night for Tyler Grower, and that'll leave a runner at first. Another Edward Jones Chris Collins strikeout. And that is the old hat trick for Sells as he has struck out three times. As they work around the two-out single from Zane Harris. And we will head here to the bottom of the fifth inning here at Historic Fleming Stadium. And let's give you a look at some other scores. Is now actually Gastonia has tied up that game with Ashboro. It's now 6-6. Top of the seventh inning for City. Leads High Point Thomasville 7-4. Also top of the sixth inning, Savannah leading Lexington County 5-4. Top of the seventh inning, Morehead City 2-1 leaders against Fayetteville. And then game number two of a doubleheader, bottom of the sixth inning, Martinsville leads 7-1. So it looks like the Mustangs will pick up a split in that doubleheader. So that will move if Martinsville hangs on. It'll put Peninsula at 8-3. And we'll put Martinsville back to 500 at 6-6. Six and six. Tobbs looking to try to get back to 500. And for Edenton, a rough patch they're going through. They've lost each of their last two outings. Came into this one 2-8 and eight on the year. But one of those two wins is against the Tobbs. They picked up a win on their home field. After the Tobbs had opened the season... With a win in their first road game against the Steamers. As that was a 7-1 win on June 1st. And then the Steamers came back with a 5-2 win against the Tobbs on June 4th. And that was actually a patch where the Tobbs dropped three in a row. Before breaking that streak with a 6-3 win against Edenton. On June 7th. So for the Tobbs here. In the bottom of the 5th. The only batter that did not step up to the plate in the fourth, Caleb Dean, will lead things off. It'll be the six, seven, and eight batters. As a pitch here will miss down in the dirt as Josh Leeser back out there on the mound for the Steamers. After giving up the RBI single to Nestor and then the two RBI single to Brooks. And this one laced down the third base line, and I thought that one was fair. And so that's a tough play there for Caleb Dean. That was a laser. It definitely was fair, I'll say, before the bag. But it must have crossed over better vantage point, hopefully, for the home plate umpire. 2-1 now on its way, and that one shot foul down the third baseline. That time, Leeser was more, excuse me, the batter. Dean was more in front of it in the offering from Leeser. Leeser, second pitcher of the night. After Casey Queener. Went three plus, was unable to get an out in the fourth inning. Pitch here, swung out. That one hit out to left center. Raging over for it is Jefferson, but he's called off by Gardner. And luckily, Gardner got there, made the catch, and got out of the way because Jefferson was on a full sprint from center. Now that one was just shy of the warning track and left for the first down. So Dean is over for three. So that'll bring up Ben Fazo, two for two on the night, with a pair of singles. Has also scored both times he's been on base. Let's see if he can keep that trend going for the Tobs. Here's the offering from Leeser, and that'll miss for a ball. Tobs were able to get one run in the first off of the error by the pitcher 
cleaner, and then they got a run in the second off the sack fly from Doyle, and then they played it five in the fourth. And this one will miss, so the count now two now. Only inning the Tops did not get a base runner. Was in the third as Queener was able to navigate through the four, five, and six batters of Freeman, Mosley, and Dean. One, two, three. So the top seven runs on five hits, but four errors in this one for the Steamers. 2 0 pinch. That'll be in there for a called strike. Fazo took it all way. For Fazo, they have him shaded just a little bit towards left out in center. 2 1 pitch here is golfed at and missed, and then that caught the catcher, Wegman, but he'll quickly toss it back out. Takes a little bit extra time behind the plate, but he is good to go. So the count even out, two balls, two strikes. Leaves are trying to record the second out of the inning. Here's the pitch, and that one is going to break over into the left handed batter's box. A lot of breaking stuff from Josh Leaser. We actually saw two wild pitches be able to help to get Tops to get one of their runs as it allowed Doyle to score. And the fourth pitch here, right down the middle. And that's going to be a count strike three. I thought it was down the middle, but maybe not. And Brian Hill didn't look all that happy and still doesn't look all that happy down third base. I don't know if he's not happy at the umpire or not happy at Fazio, but nonetheless, there are two away. It'll be a strikeout. First for Leeser. So that'll bring up the catcher, Jacob Sharon. He's been on base twice tonight. Takes this one low. He has walked and been hit by a pitch. As he walked in the second, but was stranded at second, and then came around to score in the fourth on the hit by Brooks. As the strike is called here. As he scored easily, the big play was by Nestor. As his aggressive base running allowed him to score. 1-1 one, one pitch. That'll be in there for a count strike two. As Lacer will jump ahead in the count. Number nine, batter Nestor in the on-deck circle. Here we work in the bottom of the fifth inning. 7 to nothing lead for the Toms. And this one, a laser watch out over in the beer garden. Hopefully everybody okay on that one. As that one had eyes. That was a laser over there. So the count will hold here the ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch from Leeser, and that one misses low. He went back to the breaking ball. I said that's probably more of his bread and butter. So two's wild on the scoreboard here. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Leeser trying to get out of the inning. Here's the offering. Swung on a chopper to third. Warnicky, the throw, is it picked? And it is by the first baseman, Sells. As he bails out his third baseman, Warnicky, preventing a fifth error of the game for the Steamers. And so it is a 1-2-3 frame for Leeser as we have played five full here at Historic Fleming Stadium. As we step aside, you're watching Wilson Tops Baseball here on CPLBaseball.tv. From our family to yours, we promise the best quality in our Scott Farm sweet potato products. Whether served as healthy wedges or crunchy chips, we take pride in serving our community and our country. Locally grown and hand-picked, our chips provide the perfect choice for your game day snacks. Whether hitting a home run or chewing on the sidelines, our products ensure a healthy snack nearly everyone will enjoy. You're, You're always, always safe, safe at home, home with Scott, Scott Farms. Farms. Doug Page along with you here as we get set here for the top half of the sixth inning. We have a Farm Bureau Insurance agent, Lori Thomas, called to the bullpen. Agent Lori Thomas, always there for you when called upon. As the new pitcher for the Tops will be number 23, as it'll be Danny Cody. 
Coyote, a junior right-handed pitcher for Baldwin Wallace out of Medina, Ohio. And he will try to keep the zeros up on the scoreboard for the steamers here. As he'll take over for the starter, Tyler Grauer, who kept the steamers off the scoreboard. As he did allow six singles, but and walked one batter, but was just not able to allow that hit to the steamers that would bring in a run. Let's take a look here at the final line for Grauer. Five innings pitch, six hits, two walks, seven strikeouts. As he faced 23 batters, was able to get six flyouts, two ground outs. Tossed 88 pitches, 55 of them for strikes. So that will bring up the catcher, Wegman, who has been on base twice tonight, singled and walked. Those both obviously against Grauer. See what he does here. The first pitch from Danny Cody is going to miss. Wegman had the single in the fourth, was stranded at third as the steamers loaded the bases. Here's the 1-0 offering. That one fouled right back into the netting. So in two starts for Tyler Grauer against the steamers, 17 strikeouts to five walks and allowed just one run. 1-1 pitch here to Wegman is going to be in the dirt. So the count will go to two balls and a strike. So it will be the 6-7-8 batters, Wegman, Gardner, Jones for Edenton. Here's the 2-1. That one swung on and given a ride, but foul down the first baseline as that went in between Dean and the first base coach for the Steamers. As the home plate umpire will ask for some more baseballs here. As fans, reminder that every Thursday leading up to Paint the Park Pink Night on Thursday, July 26th, the Towns will be holding a silent auction for players' pink jerseys. All proceeds will benefit the Wilson Community Health Center for those women who cannot afford mammograms. Next time will be called here. With the count even, two balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch, swung on. That'll be a single out into center. And he's picking it up will be Doyle. And so that'll be the seventh hit of the game for the Steamers and another single. Now, to their credit, second hit of the game for Wegman. So Gardner, he steps in. He's one for two. Struck on his first time up against Grauer and then singled in that fourth inning. As he bats here with Wegman again on base. This one is going to be fouled off. That was a late swing as that one was fouled right in between the batter Gardner and the catcher Sharon. Hey, Tops fans, get ready to hit the rails this summer with NC by train. Hop on board at 12 stations from Charlotte to Raleigh and skip the hassles of parking and traffic while enjoying Wi-Fi outlets to charge your devices and spacious seating. Book your travel today by visiting ncbytrain.org. That's ncbytrain.org. Go connect. And the 0-1 pitch given a ride out to right. Freeman has it lined up, and that'll be the first out. As that will send the runner Wegman back to first. So that will bring up the second base from Tyler Jones. He's been on base once tonight. Walked in the fourth inning. It's also lined out to Drew Brooks over at third base. Top seven runs, five hits, no errors. This one, no runs, seven hits, and four errors for Edenton. Wegman leads it first, the pitch. That one slings in there for a count strike. Also a reminder, fans, Thursday, July 19th, it'll be the Tobbs Military and Local Heroes Appreciation Night here at Historic Fleming Stadium. Veterans can attend the game for free. All active military, 911 telecommunicators, police and fire department members will receive discounted tickets. That is the 0-1 pitch and the dirt. So be sure to come out and show your support for your local heroes. Again, that's Thursday, July 19th, the Tops Military 
and local heroes appreciation night here at historic Fleming Stadium. So a one ball, one strike count with one away here in the top of the sixth inning and a runner on base. The pitch from Danny Cody. And that one looked like it froze the batter Jones out the inner half, but no call. So the count now, two balls and a strike. The center fielder Jefferson is in the on deck circle. Steamers trying to turn things back over to the top of their lineup. Now with throw over to check the runner back safely was Wegman. The first time tonight, it looks like Wegman is trying to get time. He wants to try to get some dirt maybe out of the eyes area there. Definitely try to clean off the front of the jersey a little bit. Now he says he's good. That's the first time that the Tobs really have worried about Wegman over there at first. Two one pitch on its way, and that one is fouled back. As that pitch was up in the zone, tailing in to the right handed batter. Taking a look here at some of the team comparisons tonight. It is actually with seeing the 7 0 score, one of the stats, both teams with two outs in the inning. The top is a row for six, Edenton is four for nine. But it has translated to the scoreboard in the runs category. 2 2 pitch, swung on! And that one is going to be strike three. Sharon didn't have to hold on to it, luckily, because first base was occupied. So that will be the first strikeout of the night for Danny Cody. And it will be the eighth strikeout of the night for Tops pitching. Looks like we might get a pinch hitter here. So Jefferson will not bat. It'll be number three, Josh Martinez. So for Martinez, a sophomore out of Lipscomb University from Puerto Rico. 6'1", 180 pounds, left-handed batter, left-handed thrower. Watches this one miss for a ball. Here's the 1-0 from Danny Cody, and that one is a call strike out in the outer half. So Martinez will take in here for Jefferson. Awaiting the 1-1 pitch, and he takes that one almost in the same exact spot, but the different call there. So the count 2-1. Martinez on the year is batting 0-43. This is his eighth game. As he is 1-23 for 23 at the plate. Two runs scored, one walk, six strikeouts. Follows this one off as the count now 2-2. Two and, two. and taking a look at his game log, his only hit this year, against the Tops that came on June 4th. He had a one for three effort, also had a walk, a strikeout, stole two bases and scored a run. That was a five to two win for the Steamers. So looking to try to see if he can get back into the hit column. And he swings and misses here, and that will end. So his fortunes will not change, as that'll be the second strikeout of the inning for Danny Cody, ninth of the night for Tops pitching. And that will send us here to the middle of the sixth inning as we will send this one to a break as you are watching Wilson Tobbs Baseball here on CPLBaseball.tv. So what makes Mobile Mini the most secure choice for portable storage? It's our all-steel construction, patented tri-cam locking system, and container guard locks that come together to provide the most secure portable storage solution in the business. Our standard containers combine exceptional security with excellent value, utilizing exterior locking bars for access and may require an extra hand. This system is ideal for construction situations where access is infrequent. For even greater ease and convenience, our premium container delivers Mobile Mini superior security with our easy access design. Doors easily open with one hand, making it ideal for frequent retail or commercial use. Whichever way you go, you can't go wrong. Locking in the superior quality, security, and convenience of Mobile Mini. From our family to yours, we promise the best quality in our Scott Farm sweet potato products. Whether served as healthy wedges or crunchy chips, 
We take pride in serving our community and our country. Locally grown and hand-picked, our chips provide the perfect choice for your game day snack. Whether hitting a home run or cheering on the sidelines, our products ensure a healthy snack nearly everyone will enjoy. You're, You're always safe, safe at home, home with Scott, Scott Farms. Farms. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along with you as we get sent for the bottom of the sixth inning here at Historic Fleming Stadium in Wilson, North Carolina. A 7 0 lean for the Wilson Tops looking to try to pick up their second win in a row and get back to 500 on the season. As the only defensive change for the Steamers as staying in the game. After pinch hitting for Jefferson is Martinez. He'll head out to center field. Nine strikeouts on the night for Tobbs pitching after Danny Cody struck out Jones and Martinez to end the inning. So he was able to work around the leadoff single from Wegman. So for the Tobbs here in the bottom of the sixth, it'll be their nine, one, and two batters. As it'll be Nestor, Doyle, and Brooks. And this is after Leeser worked a one, two, three, fifth inning. Tom's going to try to see maybe if they can add some more runs here to the offense. Right now they are capped at their season high in runs in seven. They've done that now in back-to-back -back games. And they've done it with just five hits tonight. As the first pitcher will be a strike to Nestor. Has been a base twice tonight. They reached on an error in the second. Also is an RBI single. Sends this pitch out into center, and that'll drop in front of Martinez. And Jacob Nestor has himself his second hit of the night and the sixth of the game for the Tops. So that'll bring up Brenton Doyle. Doyle has been on base twice tonight, has scored two runs, has doubled, reached on an error by the shortstop, Chufo, and has scored a wild pitch. Also delivered a stack fly as head coach. Burgo is going to make his way out to the mound, and that is going to be the end of the line for Josh Leeser. So Leeser will come out after allowing the leadoff single to Nestor, and Brenton Doyle will face a new pitcher. We'll see who. As the new pitcher will be number five, as it will be Colin Storms. So Storms will check in. He will be the third pitcher of the game here for the Steamers. So we'll get you the details here on Colin Storms as he is a freshman from Navarro College out of Louisville, Texas. 6'3", 195 pounds. And for Storms, this will be his fourth appearance of the season. Has tossed three innings, allowed six runs, three of those earned off three hits, has struck out five batters, and walked four as an ERA of nine. And taking a look here at his game log, he actually has pitched against the Tobs once this year, as that was the 6-3 to three loss for Edenton here at Historic Fleming Stadium on June 7th. He tossed two-thirds of an inning and struck out one batter in that one. He'll bat here with a runner on first and nobody out. He'll face the leadoff batter, Brenton Doyle. So the runner, Nestor, the responsibility of Leeser, but we'll give you his line outside of the runs. As for Leeser, he goes two innings plus, gives up three runs, two run to this point off three hits. As he struck out one batter, did not walk any. Faced 10 batters, four fly balls, one ground out, tossed 41 pitches. 25 of those for strikes. This was after the starter, Casey Queener, went three. So Storm's ready to go. Brenton Doyle steps in. He's ready to go. Nestor takes his lead at first. And now setting finally, here's Storms. And his pitch home. That swung on at the third baseman. He flips to second. The turn to first is in time. And now we have 5-4-3 double play as the Steamers go around the horn. And that's just what the doctor ordered for the Steamers. One pitch and two outs. As that will bring up Drew Brooks now with the bases empty and two away. So 
Brooks in this game has singled, brought in a pair of runs, and has also popped up to the pitcher and walked. Also a stolen base to his line tonight. Takes a strike here on the inner half. So that's probably been one of the best things so far that's happened for Eden tonight, that 5-4-3 double play. So that will officially close the book on Josh Leeser. As this one is going to miss. There's the 1-1 one, one pitch. That one swung on. That one skied in the air. Long run for Martinez in. And he's called off by the shortstop, Chufo. As Chufo will hold on to it. So that'll turn out to be a second consecutive 1-2-3 inning. As the Steamers work around the leadoff single from Nestor after they make the call of the bullpen. So that will send us here to the top of the seventh inning at Historic Fleming Stadium. As you are watching Wilson Tops Baseball. Here on CPLBaseball.tv. So what makes Mobile Mini the most secure choice for portable storage? It's our all-steel construction, patented tri-cam locking system, and container guard locks that come together to provide the most secure portable storage solution in the business. Our standard containers combine exceptional security with excellent value utilizing exterior locking bars for access and may require an extra hand. This system is ideal for construction situations where access is infrequent. For even greater ease and convenience, our premium container delivers Mobile Mini superior security with our easy access design. Doors easily open with one hand, making it ideal for frequent retail or commercial use. Whichever way you go, you can't go wrong. Locking in the superior quality, security, and convenience of Mobile Mini. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along with you here as we get set for the top of the seventh inning at Historic Fleming Stadium. A 7 to nothing lead for the Wilson Tops. As we have a Farm Bureau Insurance agent, Lori Thomas, called to the bullpen. Agent Lori Thomas, always there for you. When called upon, as it'll be number 27, Sam Lanier, the junior right-hander from East Carolina University out of Maitland, Florida, as he will be making his season debut for the Tobs. Lanier, one of two players for the Tobs out of Maitland, Florida, along with Rigsby Mosley. And he will step on, so obviously no stats to read for you for him. We'll give you a check though what he was able to do at East Carolina this year. So Lanier, six foot, 205 pounds. 2017 appeared in 27 games all in relief. Frank second on the team. And a two and two record with one save. Third Fan 36 batters while walking 18 over 38 and third innings. So that'll bring up the leadoff batter, Bryson Worrell. Worrell 0 for 3 in the game. Watches the second pitch miss. He has popped up in foul territory to Dean at first, struck out swinging, and then had a fly ball in right field that was caught by Freeman in the fourth. Trying to turn his night around. Seven hits in the game tonight for Edenton. They've all been singles. Just have not been able to produce a run. Two ball here from Lanier is fouled right back into the netting. Had the netting not been there, fairly confident. I've been saved by the pole that's right in front of me. So we'll see what Lanier can do here with the bases empty. One, two, three batters for Edenton. Warnicky in the deck circle. Signs here from Sharon. The two, one, and there. Call it strike on the outer half. Good fastball there from Lanier. Third pitcher of the night for the Tobbs. Two, two on the way, and that one was a late swing, and that one is fouled into the stands on the third base side. So that will keep the at-bat alive. So Lanier taking over for Danny Cody, who we saw toss the sixth inning. 
Toots to pitch again. In there, called strike three. Ten strikeout of the night for Tobbs pitching. And it's a good start for Sam Lanier in a Tobbs uniform as he strikes out. Worrell. Second time that Worrell has struck out tonight. First time of the looking variety. So that'll bring up Warnicky. It was one for three. Warnicky struck out in the fifth, singled in the third, flew out in the first. We're stranded at second in the third inning. Pitcher from Lanier is going to be in there for a count strike. So for the Tobbs tonight, Tyler Grower went five, fan seven, despite allowing six hits and walking two. Kept the steamers off of the scoreboard. This one going to miss. Warnicky thought about starting to offer at it. And then Danny Cody came in. He tossed an inning. Did yield a hit, but he was able to work around it as he struck out a pair of batters. Did now allow a walk. One out here in the top half of the seventh. The offering is foul down the first baseline. Take a trip here around the Coastal Plain League while we have a moment. As bottom of the fourth inning, Bacon and Florence tied 1-1. Bottom of the seventh inning, Holly Springs leading Wilmington 4-3. to three. Top of the seventh inning, Gastonia has broke a 6-6 tie to take a 10-6 lead against Ashboro. Top of the ninth inning, Forest City looking to try to close things out at home against High Point Thompsville. As Forest City leads 9-4. Top of the eighth inning, all tied at five between Savannah and Lexington. And then top of the eighth inning, Moorhead City leads Fayetteville three to one. And then a final in game number two of a doubleheader, Martinsville splits their twin bill with Peninsula seven to three. So both teams winning a game there. Two-two pitch here from Lanier. That one misses low and away. And the count now full three and two. So with that doubleheader, taking a look at the CPL North Division, Peninsula is now 8-3, and three, and for Martinsville, they're 6-6. Six and six. Payoff pitch coming here from Sam Lanier, and that one is low, ball four, as Warnicky will be on base for the second time tonight. He heads down to first. So that'll bring up the shortstop, it will be Chufo. Chufo. Two for three tonight, singled in the first, singled in the third, then was able to get retired by Grower in the fifth with a fly ball to right. Both times tonight he has been left at first base when he has gotten on. Warnicky will lead over at first. Here's the pitch. That one going to be slow and inside. One away here in the inning. Designate here Zane Harris in the on-deck circle. Runner is off. The pitch up away. The throw. And a tag was applied, but it was a late tag by Nestor. There is second. So that will be a stolen base for Warnicky. First stolen base tonight for the Steamers. And for Warnicky, that will be stolen base number three. As he is now three for four, so he leads off second. Count is 2-0 and oh to the batter, Rich Chufo. The pitch here is inside. That almost caught the jersey. So the count in the favor of the batter. Steamers trying to put something together here in the top of the seventh. They trail seven to nothing. Here's the 3 0, and that one is not going to be a called strike. So the four pitch walk from Lanier. And that'll put runners on first and second. Consecutive walks. After the strikeout to World to start the inning. 
So we'll see what Zane Harris can do for his steamers. One for three. A pair of ground outs and then a single on the fifth. That's where he was left at first base. After Grower navigated through the fifth. Pitch here, Scott in the air. Sharon gives it a look. But that one's going to be out of the ballpark. So we'll have to do it over again here. Again, I'd like to thank our game day sponsors, Wilson City Little League, Amar Jortha, Dean's Farm Market, and R.A. Jeffries. Is at City of Wilson Little League night here tonight at Historic Floating Stadium, along with our Farm to Field Farmers Market. And, of course, throwback Thirsty Thursday. Tom's on the road tomorrow at Peninsula, then back home for two on Saturday against the Mustangs. Pitch here almost up and away as the count evens up. So the Tobs, it'll be a big one tomorrow night against CPL North Division leading Peninsula. As they had their five-game winning streak snapped as Martinsville took the second game of that doubleheader. Both of those teams had four-game winning streaks coming into the doubleheader today, so something had to give. And that's probably good that they both split. So the county are balling two strikes to Zane Harris with one away here. And a pair of runners on base for the Steamers. Steamers have left nine runners on base tonight, trying to not make it more. And stepping out here will be, we'll call it the batter, Harris. It's, it's kind of the same time that the pitcher stepped off for the tops. And a step off here now is having to slide back in. It was just running right into the bag it was Warnicky. Yeah, starting to head over was Frick, the shortstop. Sam Lanier sets out on the mound. Heading the count one and two. The pitch is going to miss outside. They tried to frame the corner. So the count evens up two balls and two strikes. First baseman Arthur Sells in the on-deck circle. He'd love to change his night around. Went 0 for 3 with three strikeouts against Tyler Grower. Then he get a chance to face Danny Cody. Here's the 2-2 in there. Call strike three. And Zane Harris can go back and see if he can play MLB the show and try to get a hit, but he won't hear as that's going to be the second out of the inning. So strikeout number 11 on the night for Tobbs pitching, and this season when they've recorded 10 or more strikeouts in a game, it's been pretty good for them. So trying to keep that trend going. So that'll bring up the first baseman, Arthur Sells. 0 for 3, has struck out swinging every time. Runners going here, the throw down, and Nestor able to glove it, even though that throw from Sharon was off the line a little bit. Trying to see what the call at the plate was. And it looks like it was a ball. So the count will be 1-0 to Sells after the double steal by Warnicky and Chufo. So second stolen base of the inning for Warnicky. And that's one swung out of miss, so the count evens up. So it looks like the count actually opened two. That pitch on the throw down to second was actually a strike. Home plate umpire, though, really didn't give us all that much help after looking at the scoreboard. 0-2 pitch is swung on. That one driven out to right. Freeman trying to line it up, and he's not going to be able to make the catch. Ball is down. And that is going to play the pair of runs for Edenton as they will break up the shutout here in the top of the seventh off of the hit from Sell. So he breaks up his 0 for 3 night in a big way. As that will be a two RBI double for Arthur Sells. As he got Goodwood on that one and it just kept traveling and it was a tough play for Freeman out and right as he got turned around and couldn't come up with the catch so Eighth hit of the night for the Steamers, their first extra base hit. As right here comes just one out away from 
stranding the runners on base. So the two walks come back to hurt him. And he gets a strike here to the catcher, Wegman. Wegman, two for two on the night, has been a base all three times. Was one for one with a walk against Grower and then had a single against Cody. In the sixth inning, 0-1 pitch here is going to miss low and away. So two runs home here for the Steamers in the top of the seventh. Finally able to break the goose egg up on the score column. 1-1 pitch is going to be a called strike. As Wegman tried looking like he needed to get out of the way of it. But went to fool the home plate umpire. Steamers still potentially to strand their 10th runner of the Mason game with Sells out at second. 1-2 count here. The pitch is going to miss low and away. Good take there by the Steamers catcher. Looking ahead to the bottom of the seventh for the Tops. It'll be their three, four, five batters. Frick, Freeman, and Mosley. Sounds like a good name for a law firm there. 2-2 Two -two pitch is going to miss outside, and the count is now full. Is Wegman trying to get on base for the fourth time tonight? With his first baseman sells out there at second base. So two runs, eight hits, four errors for the Steamers. Seven runs, six hits, no errors for Wilson. Look back to second. Now the pitch home, and that's going to miss for ball four. Third walk of the inning. So that'll be the fourth time tonight that Wegman has been on base. Two walks, two singles. And that will bring up the left fielder, Gardner. Gardner, one for three tonight, has struck out, single. That came in the fourth, and has also flied out to right. Because that was another nice running catch by Freeman out there in right. First pitch here is going to be taken up in the zone. There is some action down in the Wilson bullpen. As it looks like it is actually number 36. Is that actually not, excuse me, 38. That's Sean Dealey. Pitch here is swung on. Hit out to left. Ranging back for it, Rigsby Mosley. Waits for it, makes the catch. And that will do it. So the Steamers plate two on the two RBI double from Sells, but they leave a runner on. It's time to send it down here for seventh inning stretch at historic Fleming Stadium. So get up and sing along. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Nick Page along with you here as we set for the bottom of the seventh inning. Tobbs now lead this one 7-2 to two after the Steamers. Able to plate a pair of runners after Warnicky and Chufo worked back-to-back -back walks. Down to two strikes. Sells turns his night around after going over three. Laces the double out to right field to plate both the runners, Warnicky and Chufo. And then after the walk to Wegman, Gardner flies out to left. So the Steamers have stranded 10 runners on base tonight. But we're able to get their first two there in the inning. And he's back out to work here for the Steamers is going to be Colin Storms. Storms came on there in the sixth inning. 
After the leadoff single by Nestor. And then he abruptly got the 5-4-3 double play on the first pitch to Doyle. And then got a pop-up by Brooks. So it'll be Frick, Freeman, and Mosley here in the bottom of the seventh. Frick 0 for 3 in the game has popped up to second twice. Also flied out to center. Tops fans, be sure to come out on Friday, June 29th for the 5th Annual Dig into the Diamond Game. Fans need to pre-register for free at Saslow's Jewelers in Wilson for your chance to dig for one of several prizes. Featured prizes are a round trip to Las Vegas, four-day cruise, his and her wedding bands, and Tobbs season tickets. As the first pitch here, will miss for a ball. The 1-0, and that one will be there for a college strike. Tobbs would also like to thank their exclusive partners, Emerge Ortho, Greenlight, and Thomas Law Attorneys. As all Tobbs games presented a partnership with Thomas Law. Tobbs would like to send a thank you to Thomas Law for their continued support of Wilson Tobbs baseball for the past 22 seasons. And for Pat Frick, he is not going to appreciate the pitcher, Colin Storms, hitting him there, even though he will appreciate being able to pitch base for the first time tonight. So that is the second Tobbs batter that has been hit tonight by Edenton pitching. So the Tobbs will get a base runner. And this is just their second base runner since the fifth inning. Pitch here, given a ride by Freeman out to right field. That's going to be over the right fielder, Whirl's head. Heading for third is Frick, and they're going to hold him there. Sliding into second is Carson Freeman, and he has his first hit of the night, a double to right field, and the Tobs have two in scoring position here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And that one just jumped off the bat of Carson Freeman. Got a good solid swing on that one. So he picks up his first hit of the night. Tobbs now with seven hits in the game. And we'll see if Rigsby Mosley can get his first hit as a top. Has been on base once tonight, also has an RBI. Has grounded out the first flight out to right, reached on an air by the pitcher. That came all the way back in the first thing. That actually got the scoring started for the tops. First pitch on its way here from Storms. And that's a breaking ball that did not break. So the count will be a ball and no strikes. So for the Tobs here tonight, looking at their lineup, not for that hit by Freeman. Everybody for except Caleb Dean has been on base in this one. Dean 0 for 3 in the number 6 spot in the lineup. Count 1-0 here to the batter, Rigsby Mosley. They play halfway at the corners. Back up the middle, the pitch is swung on. The catcher, Wegman, will give it the obligatory look, but that will be over top of the grandstand. So 7-2, to the advantage for the Tobbs. As we get late here on Thursday night, just past 9.30 here in Wilson, North Carolina. After first pitch was fired at 7.06 p.m. by Tyler Grower. Signs here from the catcher, Wegman. Storms, sets, and delivers, and that one misses up for a ball. So the count now 2-1. and one. Bottom of the fifth inning, still tied 1-1 between Macon and Florence. Top of the ninth inning, Holly Springs looking to try to close out a 4-3 win against Wilmington at home. Bottom of the seventh inning, Gastonia leads Ashboro 10-6, and a final from Forest City is the Owls. Defeat High Point Thomasville 9 to 4. 2 1 pitch coming here to Mosley. That one is in the dirt, but a nice job by Wegman to scoop that one up. Also, bottom of the eighth inning, and Savannah has plated five to break a 5 5 tie between themselves and Lexington County. The Bananas trying to pick up a win on the road. Top of the ninth inning, and Morehead City has a 3 2 lead against Fayetteville. And then a final. Martinsville picking up a 7-3 winning game number two of a doubleheader. 3-1 pitch is swung on a chopper to first. 
the second baseman gets it to throw to his pitcher. He would say he won the race, but another run will score. As another run powered by a green light, as that'll make it eight to two. So again, another high chopper from Rigsby Mosley doesn't lead to a hit, but it leads to a Tobbs run. So he'll pick up his second RBI of the game on the four to three ground out. Does his job there as there's now one away and also Carson Freeman behind the play was able to move over to third. So that'll bring up Caleb Dean. Only batter in the Wilson lineup tonight not to reach base. 0 for 3. Takes a called strike one here. Fly out to center. Struck out swinging. And fly it out to left. So defensively for the Steamers, they'll play halfway here at the corners. A little bit back up the middle. And that one waved at and missed. As the pitcher, Colin Storms, took a little bit off that one. Ben Faison in the on-deck circle for Wilson. Two for three tonight. Now they'll bring the infield in. And this one is chopped foul down the third baseline. In that spot there, Dean, he's really been hugging that third baseline tonight. Had one earlier. We thought maybe could have been called fair, but the umpires did not agree as they called it foul. Freeman is the runner at third. 0-2 pitch again coming here to Dean, and that one is in the dirt. It gets away from Wegman, but for Freeman, he has to retreat back to third. So the count now, a ball and two strikes. Head coach Brian Hill will go through the signs down there at third. Caleb Dean trying to come through here with a one-out hit and a runner on third. Dean had a pair of RBIs in the win against Wilmington. Trying to keep his RBI streak alive here. Now time called for his Dean in that win against the Sharks. Went two for four with an RBI double, also an RBI single. His, his RBI hits came in the fifth and seventh innings, so we'll see if he can do it here. The pitch, got a miss. No call from the plate umpire. So it's two and two. One run already home here in the inning. Frick scoring from third on the RBI ground out by Mosley to the right side. Here's the 2-2 offering. That one giving a ride out to left. Going back for Gardner. That's over his head. He has no idea where it is. Going for second is Caleb Dean. Here comes the throw. Not in time. RBI double for Caleb Dean. He breaks up an 0-3 night. And it's another run powered by Greenlight. And the Tobbs lead 9-2. It's a great piece of hitting there by Caleb Dean. A 2-2 pitch. And so he now picks up his second RBI double in his last two games. And now the batter will be Fazo. That one was inside, almost caught the forearm of the designated hitter from LaSalle. Fazo single, scored a run in the second, did the same in the fourth. And also struck out looking in the fifth, even though he wasn't all that happy about the call. So he bats here with a runner in scoring position. Tobbs with a 9-2 lead. Here's the pitch. That one misses inside. So in their last two games, the Tobbs have set season highs in hits and now in runs, with the nine runs being a new mark. So the 2-0 will be on its way. And the pitch here breaks in. That'll be a called strike. So Ben Fazio trying to come through here for the Tobs. Look back to the runner on second and Dean. Here's the pitch. That's in the dirt, but Wigman. It's 
So we'll see what Fazio can do here on the three and one. Dean leads off second. And this one up and away of all four. So Fazio on base for the third time tonight. And going out to have a chat with his pitcher will be Wegman. So it'll be runners at first and second. And now we'll get a conference on the mound here as there is a pitcher warming up down in the Steamers bullpen. Trying to buy some time here. Now the home plate umpire will make his way out. So we'll see here what Jacob Sharon can do. He's been on base twice tonight. He's also scored a run. He walked in the second, was hit by a pitch, and the fourth came around to score and then grounded out to third in the one, two, three, fifth inning. Look back here to second by Storms. Now the pitch home. That one swung on and missed by Sharani. Swung right through it. We'll count 0-1. One away here in the inning, and that one is going to miss low for a ball, but it was close. So it was two runs in the top of the seventh inning for Edenton. Tobbs have answered here with two of their own in the bottom of the seventh inning. This one swung on, hit to short. They flipped to second. The turn is going to be in time. And that'll be an inning ending 6-4-3 double play. Second double play that the Steamers have turned here tonight. And so that will send us to the eighth inning. As you are listening to Wilson Tops Baseball here on CPLBaseball.tv. From our family to yours, we promise the best quality in our Scott Farm sweet potato products. Whether served as healthy wedges or crunchy chips, we take pride in serving our community and our country. Locally grown and hand-picked, our chips provide the perfect choice for your game day snack. Whether hitting a home run or cheering on the sidelines, our products ensure a healthy snack nearly everyone will enjoy. You're, You're always safe, safe at home, home with, with Scott, Scott Farms. Farms. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along with you here from historic Fleming Stadium. As the Tops have set a new season high in runs scored. As they have played nine here tonight against Edenton after scoring twice in the seventh inning. New pitcher on for the Tops. As it's a Farm Bureau Insurance agent, Lori Thomas called to the bullpen. Agent Lori Thomas is always there for you when called upon. So the new pitcher for the Tops will be number 28, as will be Cody Smith. So for Cody Smith, he will be the fourth pitcher of the night for the Tops. So 
So for the steamers, it'll be their 8, 9, and 1 batters as Jones will step in and watch as this one is slow for a ball for Kelly Smith. He is a graduating senior from Chowan from Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Works from the left side. Tosses this one in there for a strike. Led the Tobs last summer in strikeouts. And on the season for him, as this one is going to miss outside. The stats not loading here, but we will get them to pull. There we go. As he has tossed three and a third innings, has allowed two hits, two runs, has struck out five batters, walked seven. This will be his fourth appearance of the summer, a 5.40 ERA. Behind the count here, three and one. Was looking to get a call there from the home plate umpire, but couldn't. Jones has been on base once tonight. It was a walk in the fourth and trying to duplicate that. But he won't hear as the strike is called. So the count full now, three and two. Jones has lined out third, struck out swinging and walked. And the on deck circle is Martinez. 3-2 pitch is swung on out to left, and Mosley still cones it. So that will be a single here for the batter Jones. His first hit of the night and the ninth hit of the game for Edenton. Now batting, wearing number three, Josh Martinez. So that will bring up Martinez, his second at bat. Struck out swinging in his first at bat back in the sixth inning. That was back-to-back -back strikeouts from Danny Cody. Pitch here is chopped high off the plate, and they'll just tag the runner. They'll get the lead out as Frick makes a nice play. So he fielder's choice for Martinez. As he'll just swap bases with Jones. Six unassisted on the play there for Frick at second. So top of the order now for Edenton as Warhol will step up. Warhol in the game tonight, 0 for 4. Two strikeouts and two balls in foul territory. Swings and misses the first fastball here from Cody Smith. Look over to first. Now the pitch home. That one swung on. Hit out to center, tailing in, but Brenton Doyle there to make the catch in shallow center. And so heading back to first will be Martinez. So that'll bring up Warnicky, who walked, stole two bases, and scored on the two RBI double by Sells in the seventh inning. Is also. Singled back in the third, struck out, and fly to the left. Here's the pitch to the lefty-lefty matchup, and it's going to be a strike one to start out the at-bat. So Cody Smith trying to navigate around the leadoff single from Jones that was replaced by the runner Martinez at first. And they're now two away in the inning. As this one hit right to first, and that'll be stepped on by the first baseman, Caleb Dean. And so that'll do it, man. The runner is left on base. As that'll be a three and assisted. And so that will send us here to the bottom of the eighth inning. As we'll send this one. To a break game, you're watching Wilson Tops Baseball here on CPLBaseball.tv. From our family to yours, we promise the best quality in our Scott Farm sweet potato products. Whether served as healthy wedges or crunchy chips, we take pride in serving our community and our country. Locally grown and hand-picked, our chips provide the perfect choice for your game day snack. Whether hitting a home run or cheering on the sidelines, our products ensure a healthy snack nearly everyone will enjoy. You're, You're always safe, safe at home, home with Scott, Scott Farms.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along with you here as a new pitcher has taken over for Edenton to start off the bottom of the eighth inning as it'll be number 17, Trevor McKinley. McKinley, a junior from Faulkner University out of Daneville, Alabama. Six foot, 290 pounds for the left-hander. As he will be the fourth pitcher of the night. And for McKinley. This will be his first appearance of the season, it would look like here for the Steamers. There's a strike going to be called here. We'll so take a look at the pitching stats. And actually, McKinley is on here as this one's fouled off. Did not have stats on his bio, but he has made one appearance this summer. And he tossed one inning. And in that inning, gave up one run. It was unearned. He walked two batters. So a zero error from him, but did give up a run in his first outing. As he will face the 9 1 and 2 batters for Wilson here in the eighth, Nestor Doyle Brooks. Here's the 0 2 pitch. That one will miss outside after Nestor had fouled off the previous one down the right field line. So McKinley takes over for Colin Storms as they get set here. And this one going to miss. So the count evens up. Two balls and two strikes. Another look around the Coastal Plain League out of town scoreboard. Bottom of the sixth inning. Florence has broken a 1-1 tie with Macon. They now lead 2-1. to one. A final for Holly Springs. The Salamanders defeat the Sharks 4-3. to three. As that one will miss up in the zone. The count now full 3-2. and two. Bottom of the eighth inning. Ashburn has chipped back a little bit. They trail Gastonia 12 to 8. And then top of the ninth inning, Savannah leads Lexington 10 to 8. As this one will miss. So nice job by Nestor after being behind in the count. Comes back to work the leadoff walk. And that'll bring up Brenton Doyle, the leadoff batter in the Tops lineup. And then bottom of the ninth inning, a big top of the ninth for Moorhead City as they had a 3 2 lead going into the inning. They come out with an 8 to 2 lead. Looking to try to close things out on the road against Fayetteville. As Doyle will step in. Here's the first pitch to him. That's low. Doyle on the night has doubled. Has delivered a sack fly RBI. Has also reached on an air, scored, and then grounded into a 5-4-3 double play. That came back in the sixth inning. That was against Storms. Here's the 1-0. That'll mess up in the zone. Looking set up here now, the offering, and that one misses up and away. The count three and out. There is an arm throwing down in the bullpen for the Steamers. Here's the 3 oh, and that one is ball four, gets away from the catcher. And so heading down to second will be Nestor. As that is back-to-back -back walks here for Trevor McKinley to start off the inning. And that will bring up Drew Brooks. So Brooks will step up after there was a Chad on the mountain for the Steamers. So we'll try to get things back going here. Tobbs lead 9-2. For Edenton, two runs, nine hits, four errors for the Tobbs. Nine runs, eight hits, no errors. In the beginning for them, the five runs in the fourth inning. Runners lead off first and second. Brooks, the batter. There's this one in there for a college strike. 
Brooks has been on base twice tonight, walked back in the first, and then had a two RBI single in the fourth. Has also popped up to the pitcher and to the shortstop in this one. Here's the 0-1, and that one misses up away. So a lefty-lefty matchup here for McKinley. Tobbs answered the two-run top of the seventh as Enoton broke up the shutout with two in the bottom of the seventh thanks to the RBI ground up from Mosley and then the RBI double from Dean. Here's the 1-1 offering. That one's golf foul down the first baseline as I got by assistant coach Jim Leggett. Tried to come up with the Ole. Or excuse me, Callan Brinkley down there at first. Yes. Jim Leggett getting a little bit of aid now, not having to be out there to man first base as much with Callan Brinkley in town now out of Ole Miss, assistant coach. 1-2 pitch here, going to break in and frame the inside corner. And it looks like looking down to head coach Brian Hill, he thought that one was up in the zone. So that'll be the first out of the inning, and it'll bring up Patrick Frick. Frick got on base in the seventh as he was hit by a pitch, then came around to score. As this one misses well outside. As Frick scored on the RBA ground out from Mosley. He went that high chopper to Jones at second. So leading off second is Nestor. Doyle off first. This one inside is going to miss. And now the Edenton dugout chirping the home plate umpire. So he's hearing from both sides here in this one. Frick, the only time he's been at base tonight was that hit by pitch in the seventh. Other than that, 0 for 3. Has popped up to second twice and also flied out to center. And the count is now 3-0. Nestor and Doyle have both reached via the walk. Frick trying to make it the third, but getting set again. Now on the mound here will be the batter, Frick. Here's the pitch. That's in there for a generous called strike three. Nice to work here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Tops with a 9-2 to two lead. Just past 10 o'clock. As this one swung on, that one is to the shortstop. He tries to see if he can beat the runner. Nestor going to third. He can't as that pulled Chufo all the way in. So that will be an infield single for Frick. That will be his first hit of the night and ninth hit of the night for the Tobbs. Nice job by Frick as the bases are now loaded. And now a ball here is going to get by the catcher, Wegman. And so that one will allow another run to score is that will be another run powered by Greenlight. As Nestor comes in to score from third. And heading down to third will be Doyle. And down to second will be Frick. So that will make it 10-2. to two With Freeman up. Freeman had a double in his last at bat. That was in the seventh. Outside of that, an RBI off a sacrifice fly, a strikeout and a flyout. This one gets by the catch, but that one. Took a nice hop off of the brick by and home and came right back to the catcher, Wegman. So alertly heading back was Doyle. So the count will be 2-0, but Trevor McKinley hasn't helped his catcher, Wegman, out over the last two pitches. So that is the third wild pitch of the night that has been recorded to the Edenton pitchers. Here's the 2-0, and that was a check swing by Freeman. 
would like to have that one back, but he won't be able to. So the count now, two balls and a strike. Again, the Tobs are on the road tomorrow night as they are at Peninsula at 7.05 p.m. for start. 2-1 pitch here, lefty-lefty match. That one over the head. That is going to bring Doyle home, and he will score. And another run powered by a green light as the Tobs add two more here in the eighth. It's now 11-2. So going down to third was Frick. And so the count will be three and one to the batter Freeman. And with that away game tomorrow night at Peninsula, we will hope to bring you a live audio broadcast barring any problems that we may run to put into Peninsula, but we should be good to go. Pitch here misses up and in. That's ball four. So you can find the link for the audio broadcast right on the Top schedule page, you just click on the little headphones button that says audio, and that'll take you to our Ustream page. As myself and Brandon, too, will be on the call from Peninsula, as that'll be the first time the Tops go to Peninsula this year. And so after the walk there to Freeman, I believe that will bring a pitching change. And McKinley, he just tosses the ball to his head coach, Burroughs, as he walks off. So see who can come out next and try better there. So that will load him back up here for the, or excuse me, I'll put runners on the corners for the tops. As Frick is over at third, Freeman is at first, but that's the third walk of the inning for Trevor McKinley. As the new pitcher will be number 10 for the Steamers. Is number 10 for the Steamers is Jorge Lozano. Lozano, a redshirt sophomore from Wright State University out of the Dominican Republic. And there's Lozano, a right hander, going through his warm up pitches here. So, taking a look here at the stats on the year. Two appearances so far for Lozano, an inning pitched. He's allowed four runs on three hits. He struck out two batters and walked two. He's also allowed two home runs, so an ERA of 36 so far for Lozano. Taking a look at his two appearances, he did not record an out against Peninsula. He allowed four runs on three hits and gave up two home runs. Did walk a batter and then against Martinsville. He tossed an inning, did not allow any hits or any runs, struck out two batters and walked one. So had a rough first relief appearance, but then turned that up with a nice appearance against Martinsville on June 11th. So we've seen both ends of the spectrum in two sample sizes here for Lozano and the Steamers. We'll see what they get here as their runners on first and third with one out in the inning as the batter is Rigsby Mosley. Takes the first pitch. For a call strike, as mostly in the game, looking for his first hit, even though he has two RBIs on the night. Top is 11 to 2 lead. The pitch here, that's going to miss up in the zone. Over at third is Frick had the single in the inning. And then at first is Freeman. He walks. Now that pitch going to miss outside. So with Lozano checking in, he is the fifth pitcher of the game. Here's the 2-1. That one swung out and out to left. This will be caught by Gardner. They're going to send the runner. And the throw will go a little errant, but that'll be a sack fly RBI. Third RBI of the night for Rigsby Mosley. As that will be another sacrifice fly, the third of the night for the tops. As that will bring up Caleb Dean. Dean had the RBI double in his last at bat that snapped an 0 for 3 night.
Perch. First pitch here is going to be a called strike. And this one will be time call here. So the count 0 and 1. There are two outs in the inning. As we are at the bottom of the eighth inning, Tobbs have three home here in the inning as they actually lead 12 to 2, not 11 to 2, as the 12th run scoring on the sack fly there from Mosley. So both teams with nine hits in the game. The only difference is Steamers have four here. Those came early. Runner over at first is Freeman, and that one is swung on and missed by Dean. So that will be strike three, and that will end the inning. So the Tobs will leave one runner on base as we go to the top of the ninth with the Tobs up 12-2, to two, looking to try to close it out. And as we'll step aside, you're watching Wilson Tobs Baseball. So what makes Mobile Mini the most secure choice for portable storage? It's our all-steel construction, patented tri-cam locking system, and container guard locks that come together to provide the most secure portable storage solution in the business. Our standard containers combine exceptional security with excellent value, utilizing exterior locking bars for access and may require an extra hand. This system is ideal for construction situations where access is infrequent. For even greater ease and convenience, our premium container delivers Mobile Mini superior security with our easy access design. Doors easily open with one hand, making it ideal for frequent retail or commercial use. Whichever way you go, you can't go wrong. Locking in the superior quality, security, and convenience of Mobile Mini. From our family to yours, we promise the best quality in our Scott Farm sweet potato products. Whether served as healthy wedges or crunchy chips, we take pride in serving our community and our country. Locally grown and hand-picked, our chips provide the perfect choice for your game day snacks. Whether hitting a home run or cheering on the sidelines, our products ensure a healthy snack nearly everyone will enjoy. You're, You're always safe, safe at home, home with, with Scott, Scott Farms. Farms. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along with you here. As we get set for the top of the ninth inning, new pitcher on the mountain will be number 15, Ryan Troutman out of Lander University. As another Farm Bureau Insurance agent, Lori Thomas, called to the bullpen. Agent Lori Thomas always there for you when called upon. And so we'll look to see here if Troutman... Okay, and close things out. So we get started here for the top of the ninth inning, 12 to 2 lead for the tops. Okay, stepping in to lead things off with the shortstop, Rich Chufo. As he swings the first pitch, hits it to Brooks at third, scoops it his throw in time. Nice job there by Brooks to be able to regather himself and then toss it over to Dean. For the first out of the ninth, as it goes five to three. Now batting, wearing number 33, Zane Harris. So for Ryan Troutman, the fifth pitcher of the night, he'll now face Zane Harris, the designated hitter. And the pitch here is going to miss. Harris on the night has one hit. He's also struck out and grounded out twice. The single came back in the fifth inning. And offering here as that's a called strike. So the count will even up. Add a ball and a strike. So you have some more final scores coming in from around the Coastal Plain League. As the righty lefty matchup here. Troutman delivers the 1 1. That one swung on, but that'll be back and out of play. Out of the seventh inning, Florence leading Macon by a 3 2 score. 
Also from our final. As Holly Springs leads Wilmington 4-3. Top of the ninth inning, Gastonia 13-8 lead against Ashboro. And then bottom of the ninth inning, Lexington County looking to try to see if they can have another comeback as they trail Savannah 11-8. And then finals as Morehead City picks up an 8-3 win against Fayetteville. Martinsville and Peninsula split a doubleheader. Forest City picks up a win over High Point Thomasville. And the game's tonight. 2-2 pitch here. Swung on. That one's hit out to right center. Britton Doyle over there. He'll make the catch. And there are two away. So nice catch there. So that'll bring up the first baseman, Arthur Sells, who his night did not start all that great. Had three strikeouts against Tyler Grauer, but Against the bullpen of the Tops, he came through with a two RBI double to break the shutout in the seventh inning. Swings at the first pitch, hits it to second. Nestor finds it. He throws the first in time. Tops win. As the Tops pick up a 12 to two win here against the Edenton Steamers, as they are now three and one against the Steamers this season. So the Tops will improve to five and five for the Steamers. They will fall. To two and nine. So the Tobs will be at 500 going into tomorrow night's matchup against CPL North Division leading Peninsula, who is eight and three. And as we take a look here at the final pitching decisions, really not all that hard tonight to try to work through as Tyler Grauer picks up his second win against the Edenton Steamers. He moves to two and zero, oh, and then the losing pitcher will be the starter, as it is Casey Queener as he falls to 0 and 3, and then no save here in tonight's ball game. So final line here for the starter, Tyler Grauer, as he goes five innings, allows six hits, all of them singles, walks two batters, and strikes out seven. So now in two starts against the Edenton Steamers, he has struck out 17 batters while walking five in two starts. And then Danny Cody, he goes an inning, does allow one hit, doesn't give up a run, as he strikes out two batters in this one. And then after that, it was Sam Lanier who came in as for Lanier making his debut. He gave up two runs on one hit. It was the double as he walked three batters, struck out two. And then for Cody Smith, he goes an inning, allows a hit, but doesn't get anything up. And then Ryan Troutman comes in, and he works a one, two, three, ninth inning as he goes five, three ground out, a fly ball to center, and then a four to three on the ground up, and that is how the Tobs get to their 12 to two win. Then we take a look here at the final line score. Two runs, nine hits, four errors for the Steamers. 12 runs, nine hits, no errors for the Tobs in this one. As the Tobs back in action tomorrow night, 7.05 p.m. first pitch against the Peninsula Pilots. We'll have an audio broadcast for you on Ustream. You can find the link again on the Wilson Tobs schedule page. We'll also be able to share it on social media as we get ready for the game. And then the Tobs are back home for a couple of games. They have a doubleheader on Saturday. They're home on Sunday and they're home on Monday. And there'll be plenty of opportunities to see some Tobs baseball this weekend and in the coming days. So that'll do it for us here from Historic Fleming Stadium as the Tobs pick up the 12-2 win and they get back to 500 as they are now 5-5 five and five through their first 10 games of the 2018 Coastal Plain League season. So that will it for us here tonight for Doug Page and everyone with the Wilson Tobbs organization. We thank you for tuning in here tonight as you have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow night in Peninsula. So long and have a great night.